What's up guys? Today we're with Yasser from uh, Cool Kids Raid YouTube channel and we're gonna take a look at his account and do some live arena and see if we can make some improvements or anything like that. What's up Yasser? Uh, what's up Shini? Uh, pleasure to be on this channel and today you're gonna give me like some help in live arena because I uh, I'm at 4800 and I'm at the point where like I get destroyed by those Galati Lazarius Siegfrieds. And <laughs> so I kind of need some help and probably uh, we, yeah. will, we will see what happens. I, I kind of need help too <laughs> in live arena, but let's see if we can do anything for you. Okay, so my roster. Uh, uh, oh, you yeah. actually have a couple, couple of mythics, but they are not quite the best ones. Yes. So I was lucky to pull a fetus. I don't know if that's how lucky that is. And then I was lucky enough to pull a Tishiro. Tishiro does hit insanely hard as long as he lands the debuff. So debuff and arena, they don't add up well. Uh, I get my Carnage. I don't know how good his build for arena is. I try to build him as fast as I can for the nuker. And I pulled Misha like I pulled Mikage from a shard. So it's not like uh, the free Mikage. <laughs> uh, so, speed-wise, my fastest champion is Sifi. We're talking about 414. Oh, that's kind of fast, actually. Yeah, I, I can win most of the speed race until you, until, you know, until yeah. you can. <laughs> I, I think uh, you meet people that are 50 speed faster <laughs> than you, which is actually yeah, I like, quite a like bunch of other, people. Yeah, my first battle in uh, Gold 4, my Sifi didn't even get a turn. Like, their entire team went, like, like, Got their turn before my CV. I do have a Shazen, and she is 401, I think. Yeah, 401. Speed, she's not six star yet, working on that. Uh, I've been waiting for the six star soul for the CV for like around eight months, I think, so far. So, hopefully, within the next two days, we get it. Uh, my new cards. I don't have the best new cards, but my new cards kind of do something uh fatalis i know you said fatalis is, is an s tier uh drop said uh, he's an f tier <laughs> uh, okay i don't i never said it was s tier i i, I said that it's okay the, the big drama was about like because many people were saying that it needs to be buffed I, i'm pretty sure i put it in uh either a tier or b tier in my tier yeah, list it's the second one it's the yeah. second one okay but I was saying that like many people were asking him to get buffed. I was saying that he's much better than average snooker. I'm not saying he's the best snooker in the game. He's definitely viable in uh, PvP or live arena, which you can't yeah. say about almost any snooker in the game. I have actually lost to Fatalis multiple times recently, but you hardly, have... hardly see people use him. I have soloed teams with Fatalis in live arena at Gold that, 4. That happened to me also, like just like yeah. last week or so... two weeks ago. The reason I went for him, I pulled the six star soul, so I'm like, okay, let's let's go for him. Cost me like twelve thousand gems to get him. He's in my best nuker HP. I mean, he's the only HP nuker I have him is so one fifteen k HP, almost three hundred speed, almost three hundred crit damage. I had him in Merciless first, and with Merciless he was hitting much harder, even though would like. But the problem I had to switch him because in Merciless I wasn't able to put him in uh, speed divine gear. So in Metzalus, when he was in Metzalus, because Metzalus has six pieces, uh, the problem was if he if if they get the first turn, I lose because he doesn't have a shield up. Uh, let me see if I can upgrade this one. Oh no, we can't. Uh, another one is I do have a Rotos. It's five star, around the same speed. Most of my nukes are around two eighty to two ninety speed, yeah, so they don't hit as hard. Because you have that. everybody super fast on your account. Yeah. Like, uh, because I don't have Harima, so to be, to be fair, the reason I started watching your videos is because you also don't have a Harima, and I'm like, I'm like, this is not fun. <laughs> Dude, it's a funny thing because I keep saying that I really want to get Harima, and then I get many, many comments that Harima is not that good, and you will be disappointed when you get her, and that, that kind of stuff. If I feel like people who say that, they just, because they lose to Wukong, because their Harima doesn't have that much HP. Because like people just build her with high as much defense and crit damage, and they forget that in against Wukong you need some sort of HP as well. Because my biggest nightmare is like two teams, outside outside mythicals. When they pick Armans and Harima, there is no way I win. And when they pick uh, 
uh, like uh, we're talking about legendaries, no mythicals, when they pick uh, uh, Pytheon with uh, Marichka and Harima. So like infinite damage mitigation. Honestly, I don't see a lot of Pytheon. I'm kind of surprised that you're seeing it because you're... It's not... like Pytheon is, is not the main reason with them. Pytheon's like add more mitigation to those two. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're still in gold 4, so you're kind of similar yeah. rating, but I don't really see a lot of Pytheon, to be honest. Nowadays, it's mostly, you know, Mythicals and, you know, Sifi. Even Maritska isn't that common, honestly. Yeah, uh, Ragash, around 100, sorry, 282. Not so, that much defense. But by the way, so do you have any options, since you are going, like, full-on speed, what do you have if enemy is faster than you? Do you have any kind of... Uh, no. <laughs> Mes Mesos for it? No. <laughs> I I am unlucky with amulets. At stone skin amulets is like my biggest problem in my account. Like, like I even literally chaos or every amulet to get crit damage. So like this one. And I keep getting stupid ogren and dwarves. <laughs> and there is no good nukas from those two. Like, oh, like what am I supposed to do to get like an ogren uh, stone skin accessories on? Yeah, and I think you were saying before that you only have, uh, I don't remember which one, but one nuker in stone skin. Yeah, it's Xena. Oh, Xena, okay. Yeah, I love Xena, actually. She's she's good, especially against those bots who use Sifi and just use A2 at the beginning of the fight. This is my Xena, around 240 speed, 7.2 attack, and 330 crit damage. She's my only empowered champion. Yeah, a lot of people, you know... I guess Elder Skarg is not one of the original champions, but it was, you know, in yeah. game for a while and not super meta, so people have, have him. I think there was like, uh, I remember when Xena was released, there was one guy in Mad who had plus four Elder Skarg, and he could also make plus four Xena. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, there is no use for Elder Skarg. Like, he has a good kit, but that can't be used anywhere else. Like, you can't use him. Like, he's not, like, he hits hard, but he's not an AoE hitter. Uh, he he buffs himself a lot, which means if you use him in Hydra, you have to put him in resistance. So they ha he has like a very awkward gear, uh, sorry, abilities that you can't, like he can't be like, oh, this is good in Hydra, this is good in Arena. No, he kind of have like the entire package. And usually these champions that are good everywhere, they lack the damage and the specific contents. Okay, do we go? Yeah, okay, sure. Let's do some okay. battles. Incoming, incoming. We're, we're kind of running out of time, but yeah, I feel like uh, without knowing all of your builds exactly, you probably would, like, you kind of need some kind of measures against the speed teams. I guess it depends on your champions, but Rotos is something. Do you, do you have your Wukong geared or anything else like that? I do have Wukong at 255 speed. Okay. Uh, as a nuker? Yes. Yeah, okay. So... A champion I also hate is Gizmag. So usually when they do this, I just go Mikage and Sifi and then I go Shuzen after. Yeah, I, I don't think nothing else really works against Gizmag other than like unless you go first, but picking yeah. as many polymorph as possible and praying that you get the proc and then it can be super easy, of course, if you get... I swear I've only... Oh my, Marius and Harima, yeah. So those are like my biggest nightmare because my team like has lots of t turn meter. So we have a problem here and we have a problem here. Yeah, so, I, I can't beat this either. I would go with out of polymorph again and pray for <laughs> pray for that. So Vitalis and Shazen. Sure, I mean, pick whatever you want. I would probably, like, I don't have those champions, but I would go with double reviver definitely against this one. Okay. Just to, like, prolong the fight and hope that I get the <coughs> polymorph procs. I have my uh, White Queen and Korra in, like, 260 speed, 850 resistance. But, by the way, did you did you happen to just pull a 6-star soul on the Fatalis? Uh, yeah, I pulled the 6-star soul during the event. So, because I had the soul, I, I went for the champion. Yeah, makes sense. Holy... What are we supposed to do? <laughs> do you have any other nukers with Polymorph? I, I guess not. The Gash? Five star? Uh, I guess, I mean... I yeah, have Solus, but Solus is useless. 
Yeah, the, the only tanky nukers you really have is like Fatalis and Rotos, I guess. Yeah. And Rotos is not super good against uh, either the, Harima or M Marius. Yeah, the, the issue with Rotos is that they added so many champ that like. Like Rotos used. Lotus had similar issue with the with Duchess. They were so OP, and then when Mythical came out, everyone is just better than them. Like, like Duchess is still good, but the problem with Duchess is that all, other, every Mythical is just straight better, and also every Mythical just hard counter Rotos as well. Every Mythical is like t triple double hitter. Okay, Infinite Stone Skin. <laughs> So, I guess you don't go with double re reviver often. What's your second reviver? You could say Ancora. I have a Duchess, but she's like in 280 speed. I usually just use A2 here and try play that. I remove the stone skin. Yeah. Yeah, none. Uh, this one just removes some of the their defense, so I just use it here, usually just as some sort of decreasing their defense. I'm kind of surprised uh, that it, it works through stone skin. Which one? No, the decreased defense reduction. Uh, it's similar to Harima, like Harima does it through stone skin, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, honestly, I would lose against this team. On only way I can beat this is with Polymorph procs, and maybe you can do it, but your team is not super tanky. Usually I would go as tanky team as possible, and maybe I can survive for a few this... turns with Dutchess. <laughs> yeah, this is what I, I pray for, like, oh my. Yeah, Harima will clean. So this is like why, why Harima is just insane. Like both my Nukots aren't like doing any damage because they have a Harima and it's in stone skin and you could look at her HP and you could tell that they have like 70k HP. Yeah, that, that's a very hard team. <laughs> I would not beat that either. <coughs> uh, I think the only way was like bombs, but... Would... Okay, we get the Armands this time. On the bright side, you're very fast. I think Marius is going to be super good on your account. Yeah, I'm just going to take uh, Gash's gear and give it to him. Oh my. <laughs> so do we just go UDK? Like, how do you play against this? Well, I, I will usually pick UDK, but I often pick it otherwise too, so... Y your account oh. is a, yeah, a bit unfamiliar with me, but UDK is good against both of those, so... So, do we just go UDK or Ancora? I would go with UDK. I mean, he didn't even pick any lockout yet. But yeah. I guess that's going to be all of the supports. So, I always pick pretty much one reviver. Very rarely do I go without any. Whoa. By the way, you're fast. Do you have Aeostrid? No, I don't have Aeostrid. Oh, okay. uh, I'm going to build her soon. Because, surprisingly, she's actually like very, very good. Yeah, and I think she would make a lot of sense on your account. If you have like, I think if you get Eo Street and Marius, I think that's gonna you're gonna win a lot more with that. Yeah. So do we go Nishak or Zena or like or or Rotos and Van Harima? Uh, Usually, whenever they pick this, uh, I just pick. Uh, maybe I would go with Rotos honestly because maybe yeah, you can. Maybe you Go can ahead. ban the Harima and you might take a hit from the Sea from Nook and so on. Like usually when they do this, I pick uh, what's his name? The uh, the frozen the frozen freezing dwarf. Yeah, Tormin. Tormin. I pick Tormin and ban CP because Tormin is good against one two here. Yeah, but I mean, he can still probably pick a lockout. No Wukong. Interesting. So we ban Harima. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, surprisingly, like, Yusred gets lots of hate, and I think I've only won once against Yusred because of the stupid uh, turn meter she has. Yeah, I kind of underestimated Elstred as well when she was new, but she is, like, she doesn't really fit my account, because I could have her at, like, maximum of 380 speed, but yeah. if, you, if you are fast, I think she's really good for those fast teams, and especially now when you can have both Elstred and Marius, like the Elstreet doing all of the speed 
speed control for both bus yeah, and the bus. This. And then Mario, Mario's uh, like removing the stone skin very re reliably. It's a very strong combination. Holy. I think that's gonna okay. be be your main team on your account if you get them. So, so what do we do now? Do we just kill the Sifi? Yeah, if you can, I I don't know how much damage the Fatalist is gonna do, but the defense buffs are protected or mostly. So, okay, the game's lagging a bit. Holy, that did no damage. <laughs> Okay, if he attacks Vitalis, I think we have a chance. Oh my. If he attacks Rotos, we get a turn. So we kill the Sifi. Now what do you do? Do you just kill Wukong? Or... Uh, you could kill Wukong because he does have attack buff. But at some point you need yeah. to proc the Seek from passive though. That's bad. I was hoping that blocks it, and then I yeah. can remove the buff. Uh, this is annoying, actually. Now, if he doesn't weak hit, we might lose. This champion is just so stupid. Holy, let's go! Bro, we're gonna be here for a while. And his Wukong is support. Do you wanna bet that he's gonna stun me? Well, let's see. Yeah. I mean, he, he can weak it, so... Yeah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, Rotos doing Grotos things, I guess. So, do you think that uh, Wukong is better as a support or as a nuker now? Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard. I feel like he's good as nuker, but he's just so easy to counter. That's why I really hate him, because yeah. people are people are picking Harim against me anyway. I think he's better as nuker, but I mean, I think you can use him as both. I mean, I've lost nuking Wukong. Pretty much everyone has a nightmare from Wukong's A2. Yeah, yeah. So, now with these, when they do this, like, what do you do? Because um, this one feels like it's an Wukong, an, 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 not, 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 not an Wukong, it's like a support Wukong. Yeah, and I guess you always first pick the Mika, that's your normal yeah. strategy? Yes. Hmm, so if we go with the, like, you can't get the double reviver if you go with the UDK. I'm not sure what you should do, honestly. Either one of those, either, either the UDK or second reviver. Does uh, Marius counter when I boost my TM or when he only... It, it does, like when you revive it, it, yeah, I think it's gonna do it, and when you switch form and so on. So, do you go Duchess or Queen? I would go with Duchess, yeah. Oh, okay, we're running out of time. What's Duchess? Okay, <laughs> okay just in time, N nice. <laughs> Hopefully we don't miss a... Uh... We don't... Hopefully she's fully geared, okay? <laughs> yeah, double. I've never actually used double revive. You actually have a good point. Yeah, yeah. I, I rely that people don't ban Sifi because she's not OP enough to get banned. And usually people like ban the the nuke the nuke champion that gives them most more more pain. Yeah, they uh, still uh, haven't picked their support, which is annoying. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not saying the double reviver is the way to go always, but if you are trying to like you know piece for those polymorph procs and that's your condition, win condition, then double reviver is good. But I don't think my enemies pick double reviver super often. I think it used to be much more common, but nowadays usually you pick like maybe a Sifi and then you have like some lockout champions on your team and usually it doesn't get banned or Harima and so on. Okay, do we go to Shiro? Do you want to see Toshiro, or like we have to find a way for this? Because we get we're banning uh, Armans, right? Yeah. Uh, sure. I'm not, I'm not super familiar with Toshiro, to be honest. I yeah, fought, just... fought with him a couple times. You don't use the. Um, I always. He's bad the against the stone skin. No, no, I mean Carnage. You don't use Carnage. Uh uh, mythicals without souls aren't as good. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
But I feel like so since you're very fast and you're relying on speed teams. Oh yeah, you have a good point. Yeah, Marius is actually good here and he can block the passive on the Wukong as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I, I think those actually those Holy Stone skin. Do you do you know a guy called Jacob? Who's like no. Like I think he's like a Spanish streamer or maybe Portu Portuguese or something like that. Part pardon, I'm not sure which one. But he's kind of a big streamer. Uh, does PvP content, not super a big spender, but he does have some good champions. He likes to go with speed team that is using like Eostrid, Marius, and Garnets. I think those are like some. Of, I think like, I've watched a couple of their videos there. Yeah, th those are his like favorite champions. I think. But yeah, if you go first with Eostrid, you have a, a lot of third meter manipulation, and Marius and Garnets, even if the enemy has like zone skin or reaction. You can still do some damage even if you can't kill them. Yeah. Just because their abilities do other stuff. Okay, this is the nuke from uh, Toshiro. Yeah, like, like, yeah, it's like the point about Marius. I, I, I can like pick him, like pull him as soon as possible. So I'm just gonna wait for next week. We have a champion chase. So hopefully, holy, what the heck is that? <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, this wait, is a GG. You you already have have him, but you're just waiting for the champion chase. No, I almost have him. Oh, okay, okay. I was gonna say that you're you're being super um, patient with that then, because I think it would be a massive deal on your account. Yeah, but on anybody's account. But I think especially if you're fast. Send him to bed. Yeah, I, I he only has if he can't kill this, so he can only kill one, right? I think if he's smart, he kills Sifi because I don't have a vibe here. Yeah, he's a smart. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're. I mean, not like okay. most champions could survive that, but your Sifi is built on speed, so it definitely can survive the A2. Uh, I want to just. Okay. Okay, let's just flex on them. For no reason. Because this one gets another turn. Okay, I forget. I forget he could counter attack. <laughs> okay, we totally threw the game. Yeah, it was kind of close. Wait, can you still do it? Depend on how much damage we get here. Ah, uh, we get. Uh... Oh wait, what? Did you... Oh, you had N feeble on Mikage. Yeah. Oh fuck, I forgot about that. Or I didn't even notice it. Uh, you can still A one. A one who? Marius? I don't know, I guess both of them are gonna kill your Dazis anyway, but... I think he only has A1 here. I think he only has A1. But yeah. he still can't kill, so he's gonna kill Dutchess. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, can your Mika guess solo it? Probably not. No way. Yeah, so, so, sometimes Mika guess... Wait, why are you... <laughs> Why didn't you go for Marius? Because this is gonna kill me, right? Ah, okay. He has the A2 up. Sure. Okay, I threw that game, I could have finished it, but I wanted to use Toshiro's second form. Because if I stay in, I use Toshiro's A2, he can kill all three of them. Yeah, and it was kind of close, and it was pretty tough enemy too, so it's not too bad. I, considering that you're 4.8k, I'm sure you're gonna meet a lot of easier opponents than that one. Or the last two <laughs> opponents. Uh, I think I played Dokmoro once, and I'm like, okay, that's not fun. I didn't even get a single turn. Like, every time I, I'm like, they need to nerf Polymorph, I remember champions like Gizmag, I'm like, hopefully they, they, they never nerf Polymorph because of Gizmag, because I just have nightmares from that champion. He does so much, and he takes so many turns when he gets his turn, so like, it's just stupid. <laughs> yeah, Polymorph is super divisive because... I don't know if, if you saw it, but I was just talking with the leaders of IPR and at yeah. the end of the video I asked both of them, is there anything you want to say to Plarium or something like that? And both of them said that nerf polymorph and I pretty much get like both sides that some people like think that it's super necessary and some people really hate polymorph. I hope they buff it. Like, like what's my chance when I queue into him to, to have like a game? There is no way. The only way I can have a game is like literally polymorphing dead nukas. Yeah, th there used to be ways that you can survive going second, but now when we have stuff like, you know, Polymorph, not not from the Blessing, but like Armands or Wukong, and you know, yeah. there's 
many things or like Marius plus tripping stone skin easily and so on. Nar Nars is ignoring passives. It's kind of hard to survive going second anymore. It, it, back in the day, if you just had like Necret and Tranda, you could take yeah. like five hits from enemy before your Tranda is gonna die without any other support. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. So now, like if I if if I'm playing someone who's much faster than me, they pick like let's say Gizmag and the uh, the clown. Do you know the clown mythical, the recent one, the one that has lots of bombs? Uh, the HP scaling one with lockout yeah. and bomb. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, did you see his skill? So his his first form is basically has a lockout, but it's a single target, and has similar ability to Galathir. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. He step and block, and then he switch form, and he has bombs. If you if he has it higher HP, which he will always have because he's an HP champion, the bomb instantly detonate, and if it doesn't kill you, it will stun you as well. Yeah, though to be fair, I think it had like 0 0.3 multipliers on bomb, something like that. It's it's two bombs, of course, but it's not super high. It doesn't usually one shot you. If but, you have... but they picked it with Gizmag, so it was like this: Gizmag HP burn, then activate, then hit, then switch form, then that thing came in and finished the the, the game without even taking a turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is where I usually pick Xena, <laughs> like Xena Tormen. Uh, let me think about it. Yeah. You could still do Rotos as well. Yeah, I was gonna say Rotos would be good against Rx because the damage increase is gonna be yeah. noticeable. But he does have the UDK, so like, are you sure you can deal with that? Because like, Fatalis doesn't do damage here against these well, teams. Well, he's, he's not going for a speed team, so even if he... You, you can ban UDK, I'm sure. So I, I think We can go on Ishak as well. Okay, do... Like do, do what you think you can. I think even if he picks Lockout or something like that at this point, I'm sure you're faster than him, so you can ban the UDK. Okay. Because he has to ban Marius, right? He, yeah, he, he, yeah, he has to. And I'm sure you're faster than him since he's going for a go second team. Yeah. And whatever other nuker he picks, but the, the Arix is not going to be a massive threat to you here. I feel like he should pick like something with high polymorph. And then ban, I don't know, one of these. Or just pick Red Affinity Champion and play on weak hits. Okay, That's... Wukong. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Since he went with uh, the UDK yeah. and Mikage. So do we just ban UDK? Yeah, I, I would ban it. I mean, maybe you could just kill it with your bombs, but... It's gonna weak hit most of the time, but we have Rotos that can survive Wukong hits. Okay, yeah, so he picked Wukong 6 star polymorph and survived the bomb, so I'm assuming like it's going to be Rotos or Armans. It's always Armans ban. Damn, Shu Chen has 30% aura. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, she is I think she is a mythical quality champion, like like that granting a turn to whoever you want to go after is actually insane. Like we still don't have a mythical champion with similar ability. I'm assuming they are saving it for void mythicals. I hope they never give us void mythicals. I'm sure it's gonna happen. G give me a second. I need to put cable on my uh, okay. my what are they called? <laughs> my uh, what's the word? <laughs> Where I listen to music, they're gonna run out of battery. Give me a second. Oh. Wait, what do you call them in English? Hmm? Well, what do you call your uh, headphones? Headphones. Headphones. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. My okay. bad. Do you think we're gonna get polymorphed here? Uh, I don't think it's gonna matter. I think you should be fine, Evan, if you do get it. Holy, these high resistance touches. Yeah, we get polymorph on the second one, doesn't matter. So, I, we just steal HP here, I guess. Yeah, sure. Because my, my Rotos does not have high HP. Oh my. Oh, I forget about this. This thing. It does have attack debuff though. I think you can yeah. maybe survive it. I should have paid more attention. Dude, just use your turn. Oh my. Yeah, I, he, he, just, yeah he, he did want to use the A2 with the attack debuff. Yeah, that's smart. No way he revives.
Is this a bot? Like, they are literally... No, the, a bot will revive there, though. People are always complaining to me that I take too much time in between, in between <laughs> turns, so I can't really say anything about that. One, two. I was hoping Shazen goes before Rotos, but it's not gonna happen. He doesn't look like he has lots of HP on the Duchess, so I'm sure like my Rotos can kill. Bro, what he's doing? Go Rotos, kill them. Okay, now. Do we just A1 or A2 here? This is like the situations like I, I sometimes like... Like do we just A1 pray for another turn or just A2 and kill the Wukong? I don't think I, killing the Wukong does matter because he's, he doesn't have turn meter. Yeah, I think you're gonna lap him. I think if you just kill the Arix now, I think your yeah. Rotos is gonna take another turn. Easy. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an A1 by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's our base does that too. I, I hate it. Dude, our base yesterday locked out my entire champions with her A1. Yeah, now we can just do this. Oh, we don't have it. Oh, that was stupid. Wake up. Now he's gonna nuke. I'm assuming one, two will die. If the CP survive, we're still good. There's always a way that Wukong can still fuck the, the game up. Yeah, if you get weak, it's on Mika Gale and Rodos, but yeah. you should be you should be good. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait. Didn't he did he use the A2? Uh I see block debuffs here. No no no, I mean did he use the A2 before? No, he this? didn't. Because he I feel didn't. like I, don't he, know. I feel like he used the A3 twice and he never used the A2. Exactly. He didn't, he didn't even go for it there. I don't know what he was doing because your Roto 7 had the protected attack buff, so it's not like he could have stolen it or anything. Yeah. By the way, my, my speed gear is literally just protection pieces from Hydro. Like, a, like a, I farm speed a lot, but I just don't have any luck with getting speed gear. So most of my speed pieces are like literally Chaos Ore. Yeah, I think I saw... Where wasn't your Sifi in like two piece? Uh, what's it called? Two piece, two piece righteous. Yeah, righteous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the one you yeah. get from Forge Pass. That gear actually saved my entire account because I just don't have luck. Like I'm, I'm not free to play. Okay, I'm not a kraken. Like I spend like depend on the month. If there is two X primal, like the budget goes to a 150. If there's no two X primal. I spend like around fifty dollars a month. So like, my Sifi has. Five protection and righteous and two pieces of this and this is not even quad. Yeah, like, but, but like this. Yeah, it's a little bit scuffed on the video. They can't actually see the CP stats. Uh, give me a sec. Where can I? So turn like, it? like the the weapon is a mythical weapon that has twenty eight speed, and it's a key. It's Chaos Ord. Uh, the shield also Chaos Ord. I always forget to do this on video, but right now, like, your camera is on the CV start, so I need to oh. turn it off so that they can see it. I forgot to oh. do that earlier on the video, so I think at the start they maybe didn't see all of the stats of the champions. Yeah, because you mentioned that you use your Chaos Ore on Stone Skin. I use my Chaos Ore more on uh, Protection, so I don't know. This maybe can provide another perspective, because, like, look, this 28 speed is Chaos Ore. This is also Chaos or Yeah, you, yeah, and Biohack has talked to me about that as well. Uh, I don't actually. I haven't been really using it on Stone Skin for a while because I feel like I have pretty good Stone Skin, and you know, I already have yeah. triple triples and quads and everything, so it's not really worth the effort. Mostly, I'm just using it on Stone Skin these days. I mean, the accessories, not not the not the artifacts set. Accessories is like like my issue right now. Is I need more amulets. But yeah, I get it. So, so like, I know that you used to spend them on uh, 
on a stone skin. So are you considering using them? Like, do you feel like you, you need to go fast? Holy. Yeah, I want to get faster, but you know, it's going to be a long term process. I used a lot of them on lethal, actually, to be honest, lethal and cruel. Which sounds kind of weird, but I was oh. fishing for those good bottom pieces. And yeah, I, I do that. I kind of have them these days, so I don't really need it. I mean, you could always use better bottom pieces, of course, but uh, I don't really have anything that I really need to use them right now. Mostly just stone skin accessories, but maybe I'll save them a little bit and I can think about it. I don't really use them a lot lately. Like, uh, like I, ha I have a big issue with my bottom row pieces is that it's like, holy, what do we do here? Like the bottom row pieces from my lethal are just bad. Like I have to rely on case or sometimes to get something just mediocre. Uh, uh I don't know. Wukong? <laughs> I don't think it's... How do you kill the Rotos? Yeah, I don't know. It seems kind of bad. Maybe you could steal the... The boss Where's from... Wukong? I don't Where's know. My Wukong? I... Oh my. Okay, we picked Tormen. I, I don't think Wukong would have been good here either. So it's... Yeah. It's not that bad. You could steal the boss from the... What's the name? What's the Nuker? I for, forgot his name. The, the Mythic Nuker. G Graal? No. This is this, this is Graal. Oh, right? oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gar yeah, 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 yeah. You Gar pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. Garol <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Garol does the... Uh, unkillable. Yes, the unkillable. But Rotos can kill through it too. So it wouldn't yes. have been that OP. Yeah, I, I was watching Drock once and he was saying, I don't have, look guys, I don't have uh, attack chests on my Savage. He had like 15. <laughs> like, I'm like, I have three. <laughs> yeah, but he's, yeah, he's probably meant like, you know, with yes, with all of the good st substats and so on. Yeah. So it's usually like if you will look at their account as like what they, they need to improve, right? Yeah, I mean, everybody always wants to get new stuff and... Just they just think attack Rotos here. They have good enough. Uh, can you kill it? But sure, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't think we can. Maybe it's close. I don't know. Let's see how much the supports do damage. But I, regardless, I guess you should attack Rotos. He didn't even took half of his health. I mean, I was hoping like we get to half because he's about to take a turn here. Oh my! <laughs> Dude, I I freaking hate this champion. Yeah, Galatir does everything. He he does so many different roles at once. Yeah, and you can't kill him. Like, like I, I don't know. I feel like, with all due respect, Plerium were drunk when they made them. They, I feel like they were like, okay, okay, they were like, this is a champion we should never make. And instead of clicking never make, they clicked on, okay, release. Yeah, but you know, they did that with Taras and Marichka too, and they know it's a smart strategy for them. I would take Taras Marishka every day over Galatir. Uh, I'm just gonna switch for him. Hopefully we drop the turn meter here. Okay, we didn't. Do we stun the Rotos? Or we just strip? Uh, I, I would do it. I guess you can reduce some turn meter too, but... Uh, like strip or stun? I, I would stun, but I don't know if... Uh, I mean, I think you're gonna die pretty fast. I don't know if your Tormin is gonna survive for the next turn. Oh, you I'm almost... Almost killed the Garol. That that was kind of close. Holy damage! Yeah, yeah. You know, Garol Garol does a lot of damage. So yeah. Yeah. Like Garol was perfect. Like would have been more better during uh, Necrit meta. I feel like now she kind of like lost that role because Tormen. Sorry, not Tormen. Necrit is no longer meta. So, and she kind of needs the protection from him. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's champions like Lazarius who can do damage yeah. and then they do many other stuff too. So, even though Garol yeah. damage is nice, but it's not that she OP. Yeah, she... <sighs> yeah, why not? Six star Harima with six star... You uh... <laughs> mm. just go Shazen Sifi or you think Mikage would be better? I kind of like Mikage when they have a lockout. Yeah, I, I like it too, and maybe you can remove the buff from Harima and survive it that way. But you also don't go super tanky teams like I do, so... Yeah. I don't think you can survive endlessly even that way. 
So sometimes if they don't have very good gear on Harima, and if I have Mikage, like they they might not even really be able to kill my team. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like even though that's an issue when you go accuracy chest, right? Yeah, yeah. Even though she's you know not gonna weak hit on Duchess, but my Duchess is like under sixty k HP and has bolster yeah, that's, and that's an insane Duchess. Yeah, and it has bolster and immortal, so it's healing every turn. And Arima, even though she's super good, her damage is not insanely good. If especially if you if you don't have like defense buff. So now I'm assuming there is two stone skin at least. So I feel like if I pick Kotos, he's just gonna go UDK. Uh, so, what what else so, would you pick? Uh, I wanna go Carnage actually. And you're gonna ban the Warlord? I don't know. <laughs> sure, okay. Let's go with whatever you think. Carnage does no damage. If there is Harima, by the way, like literally does no damage. Yeah, I mean, it's the same with So Trouble. I was like, no, 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 ban uh, this. Horima. Okay, sure. Because I Carnage literally, like, 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 no damage at all. <laughs> like, I used him yesterday, like, triple hits didn't even put Harima at half HP. Because Fatalis doesn't care about getting locked out. His A1 has decent... How much polymorph did this guy have? I didn't pay attention. Is that like 700 speed Wukong that cut in? Oh, bad. This is bad. I was hoping that he doesn't cut in between. Now he did. Ah, oh. Dude. Why don't... If he has... Why does he have that mastery that like dropped the turn meter? That did no damage. Now he's gonna kill. Okay, let's go. Easy. <laughs> yeah, I, I would Fatalis. say that I would say that you're kind of doing okay right now. But I think with with the stuff that you have, like if you get the Aeo Street and Marius, and maybe you get four piece stone skin on like Marius or just anybody, I think you're yeah. gonna see like a big uh, improvement, and you're gonna beat a lot of these very hard enemies. Uh, I want to strip, to be honest, here. How this is not stripped? Like, what the heck, man? Yeah, he buffed himself again. Ah, uh, this is actually bad. Uh, hopefully I can kill him here. Like, I, I have, like, 9.5k attack and, like, almost... 300 crit damage. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I... Carnage isn't bad. Okay. <laughs> but by the way, George, it would also be insane on your account. I I I only pulled my void shards. <sighs> okay, let's dunk on them with Fatalis. So George, so I, okay, my last 900, I think, void shards. I pulled. Let's go. Let's show like this. Uh... I just don't believe in uh, in that thing, like 10x champions. I never pulled Harima, even though my secrets were like literally using Harima or Newt. Talking about more than 85 sacred shards. Like similar to you, you know, like every time there is a 10x Harima, you just go all in, pull all sacreds. So my last 900 sacred, uh, sorry, void shards were like Shazen. Shazen is good, okay? I'm not complaining. Second, Solace. Jingwan. Second, Yakarl. I pulled Yukarl, I think around the same time you pulled your, your third Yukarl. Uh, this guy, Vitreus. Even though he's buffed, he still does no damage. Like, I don't get it. Like, they buffed his damage to do more, but his multiplier is like 3 something. Yeah, uh, he isn't like, you know, tanky or anything. Yeah, uh, Raka. Uh, to Hanrak. Even though I only pulled during Georgid, Warlord, and Yomiko. That's the only ten. That's the only time I pull void. Have you tried running any like gimmick teams with Astrolite and Astrolite and Tuhan Rock, considering that you're fast? I don't have uh, Astralif. Oh, okay, okay. Have we ever had like a 10x Astralif? I don't think so. <laughs> Probably not. I, I mean, she's not super. Uh, I mean, 
even though she kind of has been used in PvP a lot, but she's yeah. not very like common or like well-known popular champion. Yeah, I remember like Plats used to make lots of content about Astrolith. Like literally every Plat push is just Astrolith to Hanarak. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I need that champion, uh, but I was never able to pull him. Yeah, and a spoiler oh, alert, that's why he was winning, because he was doing much faster battles than other people. You know, yes. like <laughs> r running Taras and Maritska in offense or like double Taras was very good and safe and even kind of fast. But if you are super try hard, then Astralit team was like actually a lot better than that. Like every battle is like 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when they have Taras, I just always go technically uh, Rotos and uh, what's his name, Fatalis. Yeah, yeah. Considering that you have Sifi, I think Rotos versus Taras matchup is pretty good. I wish yeah. I had, I had Sifi for these match matchups, but I'm <laughs> pretty much always going with you, DK, and it kind of does the si same thing that I don't get stunned with the passive. But you can also even try to abuse the passive and get some extra turn. Okay, he didn't pick Mariska. Okay. Holy. And he picked this, which means I can never buff. So, sometimes you can totally abuse the passive and just get three turns on Rotos if they have Taras and Marichka. I wanna, I wanna pick Nishak and ban this. Is that smart or stupid? Well, that, that's the only Immurti in the team, but I'm not super familiar with the Nishak strats. I mean, if you're faster than him, I'm sure it's a way to go. I'm like, I'm just like... This is my only way to win. Just do this. He's gonna. If he bans this, we're fucked. <laughs> if he ban uh, in or well, this guy. I guess you're saying that you're. If your Sifi goes first, it's not gonna be enough I'm not for. Gonna, exactly. I'm yeah. not gonna eat you. Yeah. Okay. Dude, stop thinking. Just ban Mikage. Or Fatalis. Holy. Okay. He knows. <laughs> so. We need Fitalis for the uh, polymorph. Uh, uh, actually, it doesn't work that way. Uh, it's very, you know, Plarium doesn't make these things very clear. But wh whoever you pick as the lead in Live Arena, it's not going to affect the team order. Oh, so when you change the order, it doesn't matter? N not in Live Arena. It's going to be the order that you picked. Why? That's... Don't know why, but it's very... Very nice thing, Let's... and it's not explained anywhere, but it is a known uh, known fact. Oh man, that's okay. We lose. <laughs> that's why I generally try to pick polymorph champions early on, because you can't like substitute them as the first champion later. Otherwise, you could do that with Dutchess or something like that, but it doesn't work in practice. I need this guy to take a turn. No, he didn't? Okay, we lose. Yeah, I think this is uh, like some differences in the accounts. That I think uh, some of the other battles that you did, like the second last one, I don't think I could have taken that one, but I think this battle probably would have been okay on my account. Yeah. Like, is it because of the Duchess? Like, yeah, I think I... like, he's kind of weak to uh, like Bolster, let's say. Like, Bolster would have given me like a survivability. Yeah, I think I could have just t tanked that team, and he doesn't didn't have like strong like CC or lockout, and I could just survive it. Yeah, I see. Like I was just hoping, you know, like that he doesn't ban Shazen, but it's like just the most obvious thing to ban, right? Like, just ban the Shazen, and Nishak will never go because I can't boost. I guess you don't use your uh, Arbiter at all. Uh, she's not fully built. Like uh, I don't. Ha I think she I have it like 370. Because like for Sifi, I, I have full faction guardian, and for Shazen, I kiss all the banner and it's all the quad speed. But yeah, we should definitely pick like a bolster team against that. Maybe I could have did uh, Lord Shazar as well, actually. That one. Dude. 
Uh, is this where we pick Staltus? Oh, I can't hear you, maybe. No, no, no you, you can hear me. I was just thinking. It's kind of... Oh. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a bit... Uh, I'm not that familiar. You have many champions that I don't, so it's kind of... Um, Yeah, I kind of want to see. It's kind of hard. I want to see what he picks first. We don't really see his team that well yet, so. Yeah. See his support. If he doesn't pick like red affinity support, I can just go to Shiro and kill the Rotos with A3. Because we're technically very fast so far, unless he like picks some Arbiter stuff. Uh, yeah, I think we just go to Shiro here. There's going to be like some stone skin shit. Yeah, after the live arena ends, let's also look at what other champions you have. Maybe there's something else that you need to build, but I think you basically said that you don't have 4P stone skin that you can do on like any faction. Yes. At all? Like I would, I would build any champion where any nuker where I could have four pieces of stone skin on a savage, or lethal or whatever the, the, the damage set is. And it's very plausible that you might get it like next week or whenever. Like exactly one one reason if you just get one cute piece, it could make a big difference in your setups. Is it stupid if I pick accuracy lead here because my Staltus has like two hundred accuracy only? Sure, I mean, I guess you're not gonna get the speed lead anyway, so... Yeah. I don't think this battle is gonna... <laughs> gonna come to the damage if your status like... Does 5k or 2k more damage or not. Exactly. But I kinda need to land a stun if I go... If I needed to stun. Hopefully his, his mythical is not in stone skin. I think even Biohack was saying that he likes the combination of... Staldus and Marius, because you can buff strip them and then stun them. And since you're going yeah. for speed teams and relying on similar strategies, I think I think when you get the Marius, you're going to pick it in like every battle and it's going to be, be a key part of your teams. Do you think we should stun or just ally attack? Uh, I, can you kill it with ally attack? I don't think. I, I will stun. Yeah. So like you mean Staldus, Marius, like build Marius to be faster? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, if you go for full, like, speed teams, maybe you go with double uh, speed booster, like, either with Chuch and Arbiter or some combination of those with Eostrid, and you have, like, two turn meter boosters. Maybe, like, Eostrid and one of those other ones. Yeah. And maybe you can go with both of your Nougars before the enemy, and you can, like, buff strip the stone skin and stun them. Like, you can't do that on every team, of course, but to some slow teams, you totally can do it. Air Street is pretty crazy when you do both. She's uh, insane. Like, like, like I played against her. Like, I've seen what she can do in in, uh, in Hydra as well. Like, like I don't know why people don't use it. Like, I played that against that thing. Like, I think around seven times. I only won once. Yeah. So do we revive here or Staltus? S uh, Staltus. Okay. I think the Shiro can kill this. Well, yeah, I think both would be fine. I mean, Mikake will just, you know, reduce the turn meter and yeah. Do you think he has a new con uh, new king <laughs> DK? I guess not. But like, what I was gonna say about the uh, Air Street is that you know she does both turn meter boosts and buffs, but she also does the turn meter decrease and like yes. buff both of them. That's a massive like difference. If she can go first and actually land those things, like you're gonna go like two to three times before they take a turn. It's actually huge deal. Yeah, I I saw once uh, what she can do. It's like it's like the difference between her Arbiter, let's say, with Arbiter, let's say, assume you need a Nuker around 240 speed. With Istred, like, you literally need a Nuker to be, like, 170 instead of 240. Yeah. I'm... Which means you can, you can literally just switch your boot from speed to attack on attack instead of speed on speed. 
and it fits super well on your account because you already have two turn meter boost champions so you probably can get like two of them out of the three in most battles and if you use champions like Staldus and Marius you don't really yeah. need like attack buff or anything specific and you could just go with double turn meter booster or maybe even triple sometimes but probably like double and then some utility champion okay how do you deal with Ancora? Uh, I don't really deal with him. I I think Angora is good, but I don't think Angora is a uh, game changer. I guess the biggest thing is that you need to be careful about who you kill and when. Probably you often want to kill her first, or you, sometimes you don't want it, to kill somebody. That's so the that... thing I struggle with against Angora. It's like, it's like she completely takes Sifi out of the game, technically, because... Dude, why? why but co 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 considering that he doesn't have a armands in the team still seizing them is gonna like the Ankara is not gonna be immune to cc and she's gonna get 50 50 percent turn meter so it's still gonna be kind of relevant like you're gonna outlap yeah. the Ankara if you cc uh, he doesn't have to portal chain so I feel like he doesn't get the speed, but okay, let's just go speed order. You think you're gonna go first? I hope so. Like uh, the the level of the account is around the same. Holy stone skin, man! <laughs> yeah, e no. everybody. I want a speed boost, but I feel like that's very unnecessary to do. Yeah, I don't know if you can really do anything here at this point. You can't get rid of the stone skin and he's gonna survive. I think it's uh, a lost cause. Uh... Let's just decrease the, term the, the defense. Uh, I wanna just buff up. I should have maybe just stunned, but like it does no nothing, so there's no point. M maybe it's you can get the polymorph proc but it's looking kind of bad yeah dude I wanna, this is what i hate marius i can't switch for him man <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, okay screw it i don't think i win either do you think it's worth switching for him or no uh yeah like a coin toss maybe you can polymorph it now when it doesn't get a turn man he land but yeah, you can stun some of them. I don't know if that's an inverted, to be honest, but probably doesn't matter. You don't think Streb is better? Uh, which one? Okay, I said you don't think Streb might be better. Uh, I think I think you're gonna die before before you get the next. Or if you didn't get polymorphed, I think you would die before you get the next turn anyway. Yeah. So. Uh, that, what's the percentage on that? I, th I thought it's 30%. Uh, on what? On the enfeeble? On A1's, Marius A1. Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's 30%. He landed it, like, on 3, and then the first time he landed it on 2. And the other, the other one was, like, literally in stone skin. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's either 30% or 35. 35? Oh, 55. Oh, yeah, okay, oh, yeah, it books, yeah. It, it was, like, a... 80% because he landed it literally on three champions every time. Yeah, I, okay. I guess the one mastery would work it work on that, but I don't think anybody would use it though. Wouldn't use it? Would you still go like defense and offense? Uh, I haven't really thought about it. Probably, yeah, I would probably do it because I go kind of tanky teams and getting the 8% damage reduction can still be pretty useful. But yeah, I'm sure many people will go with the support tree and offense tree because with carnage i went with the support tree to get more a bit more accuracy and this stuff because like uh like because he does get more damage based off accuracy surprisingly like like look uh he get three every three accuracy gives him one crit damage so now he's let's say 240 divided by three that's like 80 80 more crit damage right and if you look at his build 266 plus 80 so we're talking about 340 345 on second form 
yeah, 345 on like 7.4 attack and his damage still can't kill stuff unless like it's a positive affinity. This is something I hate about raid when like they give you champions with high attack, that means their multiplier is low. So it's like kind of a scam. It's like, oh look, this champion has very high attack and then you go use them, they have low multiplier. Yeah, and they never tell the multiplier when we get new champions. Not so, like it, it's the biggest deal, but it's kind of weird that they don't do yeah. it. Like, uh, what is uh, Vitrius? Like, Vitrius has 1700 and his multiplier is like 3.2, 3.5. So it's like, why do you bother making these stats if you're just going to give him low multiplier? By the way, do you ever use Quintus? A Quintus. I use Quintus when I when they pick double lockout. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like. Fast. Yeah, I feel like you're you're kind of on the situation that like, you you don't have like you know clear obvious like super OP champions like Lazarus yeah. that you want to use as your main nukers and for instance Quintus. If you get four B stone skin on him, you probably should use him. And I think Quintus is kind of good on the speed teams sometimes like. He does a couple interesting things and he has the buff strip, but probably the Marius is much better though. <laughs> I only have one defense amulet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's definitely the way to go to like saving Chaos Source. I'm doing the same thing that literally every single stone skin piece on re relevant factions, I'm gonna, gonna Chaos Source. Yeah, it's like, so that's why I can't use Quintus as an example. Uh, let's see. Who else? Like, Solus. I don't know what this champion does nowadays. Like, they st he's still the hardest hitting defense nuker, but he doesn't drop defense. He doesn't do anything, like, beside damage, which makes him bad. And, okay, I have one. This is accuracy. Okay, would you case or this or no? O only if you need it for, like, a specific uh, champion, but, I mean, that... Item beast could be kind of okay if you need it for, I don't know, Krixia. But okay. if you need it for somebody else and you, you need that piece to make four piece set, then I would do it. So you don't think it's worth it now? I don't have Krixia. Yeah, co considering that you already have your two like accessories on Angora, I probably would save it. That That's kind of what I do on my account too. Okay. But I mean, probably you're never gonna use that piece, but... In case you get Krixia, maybe it would be okay piece. I mean, it does have triple roll, so you have a kind of, you know, it could be a lot better piece if you get the roll right. Yeah, this is my favorite part about raid is like, it's like the FOMO from missing, like the fear of, the, the fear of missing out, like, okay, I need this for one, one day I will pull something and I need this piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if you, you know, if you don't want to regret it later, you kind of have to think about that kind of stuff. So I, I switched my Ancora to Resistance because I felt like as a speed booster, I don't need her. I have better speed boosters. As a reviver, I have better revivers. So the only role I need her to be is like basically high resist. But is this enough, do you think? Uh, I think that's kind of high. I think you will pretty often resist somebody. I mean, somebody like Armand, especially that goes hard on speed. I think you will resist. Yeah. And, and I think the meta is kind of focusing a lot on speed right now. I think most of the champions with like debuffs and uh, that also of course go fast i don't think they focus that much on accuracy as they used to yeah like i'm my armands doesn't even have high accuracy because he's banned most of the time so i would rather invest in something else so like as an example i would prefer if they ban my armands over my mikage because my mikage is built in a much better gear because most of the time armands is banned yeah of course uh so, okay, for Rotos, I have him at 292 speed, but I struggle to one-shot with his A1 because I have him at a very high speed. So do you think it's worth it to keep him fast, or I should be dropping his speed a bit? Uh, I would kind of look uh, at... The, do you use Hell Hades Optimizer? No. Uh, okay, you, to you totally should. Well, why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, I like building my champions the way I want them, not the way... Uh, like the optimizer would tell me it's kind of like something yeah. like something yeah. about me. I'd rather like build my champions myself. 
I agree, and I was kind of stupid, stubborn. I remember when it was launched, I didn't use it for like a month or something like that. And Rats kept telling me to use it. But the thing is that you have pretty big account and you have a lot of gear. You have many champions in nuke sets. There is probably some builds that you like, you can't comprehend all of that in your brain. And one good thing that you can do in Optimizer, like let's say that you have Rotos right now at 292 speed. You can set that as the minimum speed and then calculate for maximum damage. And you can literally okay. see if it's going to do the same build with more damage. And what I like to do is that let's say that you're aiming for the 290 speed. Then you probably should also look that you put the minimum speed to like 280 or 300. And you see how much the damage increase or drop is if you go there. And maybe you will see that, okay, you're at 290 speed, but you could have the same damage with 300 speed. Or maybe if you go to 280 speed, you're going to have like... 20% more damage or something like that. It's kind of a good way to okay. check, check yeah, out I see the point. that kind of stuff. And I like to do it yeah. on nukers. That, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Like, okay, I don't want to drop the speed. Give me a bit of damage. Uh, yeah, and you can easily you... just, you know, you put the settings correctly and then you just change the speed and you can instantly check it up. It, it doesn't it doesn't take too much time unless you, uh, uh, once you set it up first. Uh, have you seen a Jingguan in Arena? Because I played against one and they were using him as like a poor man's Galathir. I don't think I have ever seen him, but it's possible, like maybe maybe months ago. This attack all enemy, increase the duration of all debuff, place block active skill and block buffs. Yeah, th that like sounds... similar to Galathir. Th that sounds kind of good, but I've never seen him. Okay. I, I feel like uh... I probably would, would have seen him if he was... Uh... Even a little bit relevant. I mean, you saw the Arix in the battle today. Yes. But, and I see Arix from time to time. I never see Ching Von. <laughs> Arix has, like, actually a good use. She's probably one of the best login champions that people actually do use. Instead of those just useless ones that you get and you just throw them in the bolt. Uh, let's see. So with Tormin, do you aim for high speed or high accuracy? Uh, actually, right now my Tormin isn't geared at all. It kind of <laughs> depends. I think many people, many of the like super high level accounts. I think Husky, for instance. I don't know if you know who I he know. is, but yeah, I think I, I think Husky and many other like very high level accounts. They actually have their Tormins in not even in lethal or savage, but in stun set. Stun? Yeah, and, and it's in very fast builds too, which is kind of weird because I feel like how do they have enough damage to kill anybody, but I think they focus on well, speed. If the, if the opponent is as perma stunt, you don't need high damage. That's like, I played once against the stun tournament. It was it was actually nasty. Uh, but like, I feel like the current meta, like there is tournament, there is Nishak. If they have speed teams, tournament is like kind of insane. If they have stone skin teams, Nishak is kind of insane. If you can... Again, build them in four pieces of stone skin. So those champions like always give me like more flexibility against the current meta. Because let's be honest, this meta is much better than Taras meta, as long as you don't get like to play the Galathi, Siegfried, and Lazarius. Yeah, I, I would say though that the one issue I think with Torbin right now is that everybody everybody has everything built in four piece uh, stone skin. Yeah, and if they are running a speed team against you, even though it like on paper is very good against speed teams, but if they have everybody in stone skin and maybe they have like uh like any like maybe they have maybe maybe they are running Mikake or some ally attack champion, which they often do, they can kind of do a lot of damage before the charge it even takes a turn and it doesn't often really have to risk the freeze like much if any at all. What is this? Is this new icon a new thing? I could swear I've never seen it. Oh, uh, like the, what do you mean, the plus icon? Like the, the arrow? The arrow no, sign? No, it, no, it's not a new thing, no. <laughs> I've never seen it before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my Arbiter, this is my Arbiter, 370 speed, basically. But, so, you said that you have an Aeo Street, right? Yes, not build yet. I have two. Yeah, considering that you use, like, Shu Chen, Mikage, and Sifi, Maybe, maybe you don't need the Arbiter, maybe you should build the Aeo Street and you can still get, okay. the, get the attack bar from Mikage if you really need it. One second, let me look, look it up. 
But yeah, event all like Arbiter does provide you with the revise, but in the in the current meta, I mean Arbi Arbiter revise are not enough. She's not tanky champion. Yes. You just want to go hard on the like sp going fast and turn meter boost. Either you win or you die, but you're not gonna like tank anything with Arbiter. So I think Eostrid is probably much better option for you. Even yeah, though she yeah, doesn't do a revive and she would look a lot better if she did, but I feel like she's actually already kind of good. So she's she kind of like a CC as well. So yeah, if she did revive, she might be too OP, honestly. Yeah, like she's already like I think I think she's already good enough, but it is always this. They can always make champions. Okay, can we get a good banner? I don't have any, a single treble. Oh my. Okay, no key of sword. <laughs> Let's see if we get a, a quad. No. This is five star. Doesn't help. No, not enough. So. For the Yostrid, I have even the five star soul, so we can just polymorph. Put her like in some polymorph and use her like as a second Shazen. Yeah, and you're probably gonna be at some accuracy, so it should be good yes. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Like the accuracy is Dude, fine. We, we should do like a. We should do like a re revisit video after you got the Marius and Eostrid. I think you will do so much better when you get those two champions. Yeah, like as as you just noticed, I have good supports, but I don't have the good new cuts. Yeah. Like, like I know people would say like, no, you have good new cuts, but those aren't the meta new cuts. Let's just say that. Yeah, way. yeah. Like those we, work there has been a lot of fine. power creep. Exactly. Like those work perfectly fine up to this this number. So that's why we're stuck here now. Like, I, I was so hyped when I get Carnage, but Carnage, like, just like any other mythical, okay, except Galath here, you need the souls. Like, mythicals become way, way, way better once you have them with souls. Uh, I should be getting uh, this guy by the by the weekend, next week, this week. So, probably, maybe if you're down, we can, we can do another video. Yeah, and I think even the Carnage is going to be better if you're running the double turn meter boost and you have... Marius to buff strip them, then I think Carnage can be more relevant sometimes. Oh yeah, like like Marius can has three chances, right? Three chances to to yeah. drop the stone skin. And everyone has, let's be honest, everyone is one turn one turn stone skin, right? So we yeah. have three hits to just decrease that. Yeah, it's pretty and... much like guaranteed or very consistent at least. Yeah, and I have a good gear for him. I'm just gonna go to my Ragash. What is Ragash? Sorry, Ragash, I love you. You carried my account enough, but now it's time for someone else to shine. So I can just give him this gear with probably accuracy. Like, I have a crazy good banner. Like, talking about 300 speed, around 300 accuracy. Yeah, and I think it also will fit your playstyle in that sense that you're going heavily on the speed on your nukers and not the damage. But yeah. if you can get rid of the, you know, stone skin and maybe you can buy some time with Enfeeble and so on, I don't think yeah. you need that much more damage to kill them. The, the main issue exactly. is that they take one turn because of stone skin and then they kill you. Like something about Shazen, like people just like think she's a, a turn meter booster. It's not just she's a turn meter booster. And most of the times, if Shuzen gets a first turn, that means your Nuka will go twice before their Nuka because she can speed speed boost, decrease their speed, and then give the Nuka will go, then she gets another turn, and then she will give it to the Nuka as well. So that's that's like the best thing about her. Similar to Eastroid, like you yeah. just have so much turn meter that your Nuka go twice before they go once. And if you can remove their stone skin, then you're pretty good. Exactly, like uh because most of the stone skin champions die to one hit if the champion built good. I wonder if we're gonna get other champions with, uh, I don't know how you call it, but the, like the buff decrease abilities. I think having that skill on multi hit is super strong. The mod is doing it, but it's also a single hit and it reduces the duration by two turns. I'm kind of waiting for that, but imagine Are if the they. Way... Yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Imagine if they do some kind of mythical champions that have. A, very good utility. Like, just think about stuff like Trixia and Galatir and Lazarus. Think <laughs> about one of those champions that does what Marius does, that they have, like, basically multi-hitter that reduces the duration of cooldowns. 
So this is how I feel like Raid do usually. They give us like good login champions. They are OP when they first release them. By the time everyone have them, they release another champion with much better kit. Like let's say, look at Lydia. By the time everyone had Lydia, there was like uh, better champions. Look at uh, Mithrala. Mithrala, when you first pull her, she's like the best champion in the game. Uh, by the time you get Mithrala, you, you might already have, well, depend on how fast because in the past like doing hydra was so hard nowadays there are so many good champions in hydra i, I, I remember two years to, ago to, to, to be fair i think both of those champions were like meta maybe for like a year after you got them maybe like six months to a year i think mitrola was a yeah. little bit less than a year but i think lydia probably was like a year or yeah. more than that but yeah they they do get outdated yes like by so by the time i'm assuming most people get marius we will get something like marius but because, like, if you look at Marius, he only has two abilities, right? Yeah, but he does rotate the A2 very fast because he gets the extra turns. So it's actually kind of deceptively low cooldown. So well, what do you mean? Like, you should be using A2, then A3, not the other way around? Uh, I'm not saying that, but, you know, you, since you do get uh, extra turns, you, you will be able to rotate the skill a lot more often. I see. And like they gave him 35 aura as well <laughs> so they kind of like treat him as a mythical but i'm assuming like soon we will hear about something that does similar I mean, or they are just saving it for the mythical voids which i hope they never come to the game yeah, they, they, they are so they are so gonna come like i think <laughs> next year probably not this year but next year i'm sure about it like like if you look, like what are the OP champions now? We have Galathir, Lazarius, and uh, Siegfried, and Krixia. So those four. So when Void Champions, Void Mythical comes out, we will see like... Because if you look at Galathir kit, like he has everything in the game. So how can they make better than that? Yeah, just just wait till next year and we get uh, the Mythic Voids <laughs> and we get the Ultimate Taros and Marichka. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Taras on crack. <laughs> yeah. First form does what Taras do with a better multiplier. Second form does what Galathir do, but better. <laughs> immune to um, immune to polymorph as well. Yeah. I, I, imagine if Taras and Marriage were mythicals and they had two like Holy. sets of abilities. Holy, yeah. I imagine Link. What is? What? I hate the banner loaded because of Taras Marie Marishka. Like, like, like this one here. Like when you get, when Taras counter attack and get you with like a two second stun. I'm like, why? Why it's two turns? Like it already has a high multiplier. Why would you give it two turns of st stun? And then, and then you go here, like uh, they give him like a sort of, if you decrease, if, if he gets hit instead of taking damage, his max HP will get decreased. But somehow, he's the only HP champion that you cannot uh, decrease his damage by decreasing his max HP. Yeah, right? uh, people have complained about this a lot. It, it makes no sense other than, you know, they wanted Tarnas and Maritska to be OP on purpose. It, it is what it is. Like, like if you look at attack nukers, once you have decreased attack on them, they do no damage. Decrease defense on the defense champion, no damage. So the only way to do it on HP nukers is decrease their max HP. But on Taras, it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, no, no, not to get too, you know, it's kind of real life stuff that they're immune to bombs and they're unkillable and they do insane damage and <laughs> Taras is fierce and so on. So it was kind of, you know, I think a statement from Plarium. So it, it is what it is. Yeah, like like this here, this active passive on, on Marishka is totally unnecessary. Like it shouldn't exist. Like this one is already OP enough, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's three turns. Like that's that's just gonna be so fast if you build build, build her fast enough. Uh, uh, the thing is that, I mean, it will still be super OP, but the three turns doesn't even apply to the revive part. <laughs> I don't understand why the revive oh. revive has no cooldown. Yeah, like why? Like you have, okay, so, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like sometimes people say, oh, because Plerium do not play the game, and then you look at Mar Tar Taras Marishka, you know, like they totally do. They totally know how to make an OP champion. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I I see these people often say that like Plarium is like you know incom incompetent and they don't understand the game. I'm sure they do. I mean, they're they are making a lot of money. They're smart. I mean, 
they are just making like decisions that what do we want to do and what's the priority and so on. Yeah, like like this as an example. You think someone doesn't play the game will make this? Yeah, and think about it this way. The champion abilities in this game are actually super complicated. So they, they have put a lot of like thought and effort into the combat style. It's much more com complicated than similar games. Yeah. And obviously it's maybe more harder to balance when it's that way. But it's not like they understand the mechanics. And I'm sure like any random employee that is maybe uh, like coding the game, maybe he can't, maybe he's not in charge of the game balance. And it's probably other people like, like doing the design and deciding what they want to do. But obviously those people are not stupid and they, they know what they're doing. It, it always feels like, like whenever they release a champion, if the champion is OP, the code will not get fixed. If the champion is bad, they might fix the, the champion. You know, like these situations when they're like, they change the writing for the kit. Like as an example, let's go with his note. He's a dwarf. I think I remember this one used to be 5% uh, instead of 3% here. But he was doing 3%, so instead of just making it 5%, they just made it 3% because everyone has him and he was already OP enough, so no one would complain if they match the kit with what he does. But usually, if the champion is bad, if the champion is is is, uh, is uh, supposed to be OP, they would just change the kit to match the writing to make him like slightly better. I, I didn't so even like, remember that they did that to Claude, to be honest. Yeah, so it's like... It's similar to like Quintus, okay? Let's go to Quintus because what's Quintus? Yeah. So if you go to Quintus, it says can't be blocked. You do usually can't be blocked means stone skin as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of co confusing. Yeah. Whenever you see blocked, that means it goes through stone skin. So, except that it doesn't. Yeah, it's a 50 50 percent. People have also asked that thing many times in the CC chat. Okay, what is okay? Is there anything that go through stone skin here in the game? We will, well, I did always. Do you have I, something in your mind? Well, I, I guess the burns, but uh, and bombs, and also a funny thing that is kind of usable but very nice is that you know how Kalvalax does the poisons at the start. I don't know if they fixed it, but it used to work that way that. If you do Kalvalax in arena battle and they have stone skin, you're going to land the poisons. But I don't know if it works that way anymore. Because Kalvalax put this, the poison like before the battle start. Like that's how it's coded. Like Kalvalax can also put the poison on the fire knight as well before the fire knight put the shield, right? Yeah, yeah. But... Like there is at the start of the battle means before the stone skin is is uh, weird by the the whatever the champion is. Yeah, I haven't been doing that, but I saw videos about it a long time ago. Maybe I can try to double check if it still works that way. I do have Calvalax on my account, Yeah, two of them. I saw a, a combo Calvalax with uh, Teox. Have you played against that? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, oh, like, oh no, 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 it's, that's the comp that I'm talking about. You you don't mean the Lizardman Teox, but you mean the Knight Trevenant Champion, right? So. There is some sort of turn meter boost. I fill this champion turn, oh, turn you... meter by five. Whenever an enemy or an ally receive a debuff, so mm -hmm. if you use him with Calvalax, Calvalax will put lots of poison, right? Yeah. And then Teox will just get the first turn. Oh, uh, okay. That's not what I was thinking. Okay. Because of the debuffs. Uh, what is Harima? I I, I thought you meant Theodore, not 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 Teox. Oh. So yeah, like as an example, when uh, when Theodore activate the poison on Fire Knight by Calvalax, all every activate I think counts as a hit. Uh, so you see this can't be blocked or resisted if the target champion is from Demon Spawn, right? Yeah. So if she use it against Mortum Cop and Stone Skin, she will always provoke him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So why? Because it says can't be blocked. So whenever they say can't be blocked, that means it goes through stones. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know it works differently for different abilities and they don't explain it anywhere. Yeah. So usually whenever the champion is a champion that everyone has, they will just like, no, this is how the champion is supposed to work. And they usually change the writing. Yeah. Tr tr trust me. I, every time we had one of those things, I have always <laughs> asked about <laughs> it. But yeah.
I, yeah, I remember I, like uh, there's many Sav of the did, yeah when Sav did a video about Lotus the way you explained it to him I was like is he correct and then like I started seeing it happening more when like you attack Rotos because of the Word of the Fallen, you don't get him to 50% HP, but he still takes the turn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just stupid. So, so, well, th those things I will agree that sometimes maybe the game coding is a bit too complex, and that's why they, they sometimes they don't even realize it works differently than they did. One good example, wait, there was something like that just recently, but when Fearsome uh, Presence and Polymorph were released, they were saying that it um, works with them, but it didn't, and people could instantly tell from the game coding because Polymorph was not coded as debuff and it was its own category, and people could instantly tell, tell that it doesn't work. And Plarium kept insisting that Fearsome Presence works for like a couple of weeks until they realized that it doesn't work. What is Fearsome Presence? Uh, it's the tier 6 mastery that makes you, uh, it increases the chance to proc like CC. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, I remember like when they did, I, uh, when they did uh, this at the beginning, like uh, it didn't mention sheep here, right? Uh, it's a while ago. I feel like it either it didn't mention sheep. I think it mentioned sheep, but it didn't work. I don't recall how it. But when we asked from so, Plarium, I, either way, even if it mentioned or didn't, but when we asked from Plarium, they said that it works with sheep, but but we could tell from data miners that it doesn't. Yeah, so like I think the the speculation was like basically people usually used to take this one and this one and hope that one of them will add to polymorph and then Clarium added sheep. They didn't yeah, added sheep here. Well, did they add sheep here? No, they didn't, right? Yeah, that, that And doesn't... then they added sheep here after. Like sheep didn't exist here when they had feel some presence. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think there was like confusion maybe with the community managers and the developers. But when asked, they said that it works with Polymorph. But we d we knew from like day one, people instantly knew that it doesn't work with Polymorph. But they, I, I think they fixed it pretty fast, maybe like two weeks. And then it did work and then everybody started using it. So I, okay, okay. This is a totally out of context question. I keep hearing that like when, uh, when Saf does these videos about data mining, he says that uh, end game clans already know that so like like does every end game uh, clan has like their own data miner or something <laughs> uh but, but i mean i can speak to every clan i think uh probably but i mean i think mad has some data miners but they're not like actively data mining for us i think often people get the information from like some not SAF, but some other data miners but there is some people there's multiple people in mad that can do it but they don't actively do it every time no I see. <laughs> but uh, there's like uh, there's other sources where people get it. It's not it's not SAP, it's usually somebody else that uh, people get it from. Like in Yeah, I like like when SAF does it he just basically does it for the, the public. Like not like he like I'm not saying he's the only one who does it, I'm just like he, he always say this like uh, it's like this is saying something to the public that exists to the code. Late games people, late games clans already know this, so why keeping it as a secret? Yeah, let, let me put it this way. I, again, I don't know every top clan, but I mean, I was in Mad for a very long time. The, yeah. peop, the, the type of people that are in, to, in those top clans, generally they are not like, you know, collecting welfare and very poor. Usually they are like, you know, <laughs> they are rich and they have business owners. They might be highly educated. There's many people that are programmers in like those class, like many. Yeah. I, in in math, there's many, but I think many of those are not even like you know programmers, but you know they have a company and they they know how to program, but that's not even what they do in practice and that kind of stuff. <laughs> no, no, not oh. to speak too much about people's like real life, but I know that you know some some of those people uh, travel a lot. I actually I don't want to say woo, but uh, well, I visited one person in Raid, but I also met somebody that visited me. And the reason why we met is because, you know, he does business trips and he happened to visit Finland. Oh. <laughs> and there's that kind of people. Like, I have done uh, some takeovers. I don't really usually, I don't really advertise takeovers and I don't really, really yeah, like... Yeah, I noticed that. You don't do it. Yeah. I, I never I, know why. I, I do it when people ask, but I don't advertise it. And I'm not super into it and I'm not really trying to do it as like occupation. But I have done actually quite a large amount of takeovers, even though I don't advertise it. And almost every time I do take over for somebody, it's like somebody that has played the game since the beginning, probably mostly on phone, 
and they have some like very high level job and they probably travel ar yeah. around the world a lot or like are in the meetings and they play raid on the side on the phone and they are super wealthy like multiple yeah, I don't know if you, multiple if you know this but like yeah. oh, go ahead M multiple like, of the people that I did takeovers for for instance make games like multiple people but raid is kind of like a side game and they do some like they are developers for for some other games yeah like like IT like if they work in a good company like they get paid a lot like like a lot yeah and to, like I said I did I know many of those people and often those people they might travel a lot or they might work in like they might work in one country a couple of years and then in another country I I met a lot of those types of people Okay, we just case out this Shini for Vaka. Do you think she's gonna be she's gonna carry the account now? What was that the triple? Uh, th that was the accuracy no, banner. No, no, this is uh, one for. Uh, oh, it's a five star for, for, for Vaka. <laughs> ah, okay, nice. I, I thought you you lowered the accuracy banner and you got a triple no. speed. <laughs> Let's see this one. Do you think Raka is good? Uh, I mean, I don't think she's super OP, but I mean, she's kind of good. I feel like people. We're using her when she was newer, but I haven't seen her lately at all, to be honest. Yeah, Rats used to use her a lot in, in Arena when he used to have like his uh, his comp, like the what's the what's what's we call it, like the the bomb the bomb team. Yeah, I mean she because... does like turn meter manipulation and attack buff. I guess that's because the she, kind of yeah she boosts the turn meter for the entire team when she gets a, when she gets a turn. Yeah, it's kind of unique thing that she does, but. It doesn't seem to be that OP that everybody's doing it. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can build an bolster. No, this is for Duchess, this is for Pytheon. Okay, this is fine. I think we need those two. So, uh, did you play raids like since day one or no? Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, it it kind of depends what you count day one because I think raid was like uh, I don't recall the exact timeline, but I think it was officially released in uh, March. But the the game was live maybe for like uh, more than six months, maybe like eight months. I feel like the fall of the year before, and that wasn't counted as the official release. I started playing raid like uh, I think two weeks before the official release during the Saint Nicholas fusion because I think that was still beta and the official release date was after the fusion or something like that but yeah i played since the official release or a little bit before it when, when sir nicholas used to be actually a good champion <laughs> sometimes when i think like i can't remember when python fusion was around everyone was like oh my god so op of a champion and then like he get power encrypted like two months <laughs> yeah yeah i don't think uh say nicholas was actually that used actually a lot i think you know the funny thing is that uh one champion from the fusion was rain beast and rain beast was terrorizing the meta in early days because there was only five star gear there was no no six star rain beast, you're talking about the epic right yeah epic it, it was part of the fusion and rain beast has a passive that gives him a shield and heals him and in the early days of raid nobody could kill rain beast rain beast was just unkillable like you put that yeah, you, you put that in defense and then he also he heals on the A1. You put that in defense and no, yeah. nobody can kill it. I think Rain Beast was nerfed at one point, but it's, it's super long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's fun to hear that an epic was actually terrorizing the game. <laughs> you, you literally couldn't kill Rain Beast. That, that's how annoying it was. You could kill everybody else in the team, but you could never kill the Rain Beast. I started playing Raid. They, they, uh, they sponsored my stream once and then I started playing the game. And I liked playing the game because... We have, I, I stream uh, Pokemon Go, so the main issue we have with Pokemon Go is like the, we don't have any channel to contact the game. So whenever we have a problem, we just suck it up because no one is going to hear us out, right? And then it was like when I looked at Raid, like the game actually, the game developers actually listen. They might not implement every change that people want, but they do listen, which we something we didn't have. And that's what actually got me to play the game. Yeah, well, that was around uh, Gaius of Fusion. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was my my first fusion. So, ever. so around two, two years ago. Yeah, two years, two years and a half, I think. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I think Gaius was like early summer two years ago. I I remember no. it. I remember it very well because it was 
it was actually super popular in arena and the, the like the the week when people got Gaius, my defense <laughs> got destroyed by IPR players using Gaius. So <laughs> I remember it pretty well. Yeah, I remember people used to use v v Vogoth on the defense a lot. So was that like was that killed by Gaius? Because uh, you technically don't do damage. You're just bumping everyone at once. I, I don't think it was Gaius specifically. I think he just, you know, there was power creep and he fell out of meta. And it's not like uh, Wokot was kind of OP at one point when Rotos was meta. And I don't know if you know about this, but Wokot passive was nerfed. Did, did you hear about this? No, I've never knew. I thought so, his passive is already OP enough. It it was way more OP. So there was one time where everybody was. He already using... has two passives. Probably he's the only epic. Okay, but wait till you hear this. So R Rotos was very OP at one time, and it was the meta in defense. And the way it used to work with Rotos and Wokot is that so his passive heals when you when you take damage, but it yeah. used to it used to heal in between multi attacks, meaning that Tranda was the meta nuker at that time, and you could kill Rotos with Tranda because Tranda would do double hit with the AoE. Yeah, double but, hit. But you literally couldn't kill Rotos if you had Wokot and Rotos in team, because <laughs> Rotos would get he get healed to full in between those multi hits, meaning that Tranda does the AoE and then Rotos is full health afterwards. And back in those days, I think it was also before Rotos passive was nerfed too, and everybody was building Rotos on purpose with low HP, because if you had like any type of tiny shield, and like you, you would only take, you, you could not take half of your health, you, could, you would only take little bit damage, you would take the shield damage and that's it. Yeah. And pe people would build Rotos in like 14k health, unlike now. Mm -hmm. And you had like Rotos with the blood shield accessory and Wogot in your team, and he was unkillable. Oh my. So wait, he used to heal every hit, not every turn. Yeah, yeah, he used now to. I he think he heals at the end of the turn of the attack, right? Yeah, yeah, he used to heal if there is a multi hit. He used to heal in between the attacks. That was super oh OP. Th that that was fixed kind of fast. I think it only took like a month or something like that. But Does he... Grasser do that as well, or, or it's similar to Vagot now? Uh, I'm sure it doesn't. I'm I'm not aware, but I'm sure it doesn't. Yeah, they realized that that should be illegal. What is the Grasser? Yeah, they they said it's a bug. I, I think uh, there was some like actual top arena. Like you, you saw Vokot in like top ten when he was new because of that because it was so OP. But they fixed it very fast. A after that, it wasn't really you know I used Vokot a lot, but it's not like the top twenty arena players were using Vokot in defense anymore. Yeah. I I I hate this this faction. I feel like it doesn't matter what they do, it's always a bad champion. And they keep pulling lots of stone skin accessories for Ogren. Yeah, but maybe I have been lucky in that sense that <laughs> I literally have 0 out of 10 faction guardians in Ogren, and I have barely pulled any Ogren champions. Like, the reason now I no longer skip fusions <laughs> is like, I feel like I Wait. pull lots of dupes, and if I pull a dupe, if I pull a fusion and I skip that fusion, that's kind of like a, a bad decision I made by skipping the fusion. Look at the picture I sent you. And that's, of course, Blizzard and Ugir were fusions too. But literally, <laughs> the, or, the only Ogre champions I have are like fusion champions or guaranteed champions. Yes, yeah, login champion, fusion, fusion. And the only non fusion is Droggal. No, no, Droggal was a fusion too. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is the worst the fusion. The worst the yeah. faction. I think Blizzard is actually great, but Centranos. Maybe we should do a video about Centranos, Shini. Because uh, like any any uh, stage where you could use a Blizzard is an easy stage. That's how because he has lots of CC and he revive like sorry he ally protect and so he can revive himself as well. So any stage where you could use him is just simply an easy stage. Yeah, no I like how hard it is. I actually happened to miss Blizzard, so I, I don't have him at all. Yeah. Uh... My camera died again, but I guess it doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, we, we, we finished, so it doesn't matter. Uh... So, did you use Queen Eva or it was just one day? Let's try it and that's it. I, I was... It was more than one day, but... I wasn't using her that long. I was planning to use her if I ever get the 4P stone skin, but 
I haven't been able to procure that. Bro, that's like that's like the struggle now. <laughs> I went for the entire path when we had stone skin in the, in the sorry in the deck of fate, and I couldn't get a good stone skin piece. And it was like such a like a like a bad investment where like I went all in. I'm like, okay, now I will get twelve sorry six uh, crit damage amulets. All of them for the champions I need, and it was all of them defense accessories and for like Ogren tribes. <laughs> yeah, th that event was kind of OP, so I'm super surprised yes. that they did it in the first place. I was thinking like since they gave us that, that means they, the counter for the stone skin is coming soon. But we already have counters for the stone skins, just not affordable. Like you can just that, that stupid gizmag. I, I I hate this champion. Sorry, I'm I always call him stupid gizmag. Yeah, G Gizmag is like, it's the same thing that I was saying about Harima, that I super want to get Harima, but that then I get a lot of comments that Harima isn't that good. And I get the same thing about Gizmag, that, you know, if he gets polymorphed, then he doesn't do anything. But if he doesn't get polymorphed, he's super OP. Okay, I think people don't account for something. Like my account, your account, we don't have six star polymorph. So by having 300 resistance on those champions, most likely you won't get polymorphed, right? Because let's say someone playing against me or you, you only have one six star polymorph, right? Uh, no, I have two, two Rotos and Dotsis. Okay, so usually like those are the only chance they could like uh, like polymorph Gizmag because Gizmag needs to have some resistance, right? So if they are playing someone without six star polymorph, like like as myself, that means it's literally. Like uh, the chances, let's say 20%, it's literally going to be 5% because most of the time won't get polymorph because they will be built in resistance, especially when they have 5 star. So like by default, you will have 250 and then you just give it like some pieces with actually resistance and you will be like 350 easily. It's not it's not even tough and you can still build him for nuke. Because like at the beginning of the turn, he put HP burn, then he goes here, then he buff himself and then grant an extra turn. And when he gets a turn, he activate burn, right? Yeah, and then on the on the other form, he he gets extra turn on kill and and just spam, spam his AOE. So exactly. So he, let's say he gets the, the the battle start. He put HP burn. He gets a turn. He used this ability here, which give him another turn. And every time he gets another turn, he activate burn. Am I correct or no? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I might. Uh, it's so complicated, Kit. That I don't want to say it wrongly right now, but I think so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think no, he activate his burn with, with his A2. And then you could switch the form. And you put Bane Link, Unkillable, and Taunt, and Ally Protection. Which means they can't even kill you, and they can't even kill your teammates. Like, <laughs> this is so unnecessary. This is what I don't get sometimes about the games. Like, this is so unnecessary. He's already OP enough. Maybe because I have, like, a bigger problem, because he's, like, the ultimate counter for the speed teams. And usually speed teams, you know, like they don't run as many polymorphs because because they have to run uh, temporal uh, temporal chain, and the other one. Wait, is... what? What do you mean by counter the speed teams? Isn't he like used in speed teams? No, he he also counter speed teams. Like if you don't get the first turn, you will put HP burn on everyone, right? Yeah. And he will be in stone skin. So every time someone from speed team takes a turn, it will take the HP burn, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Most of yeah. the time you can't kill him. Once he gets the turn, he will kill everyone. And because the speed teams usually have this mastery on a champion and this one on another champion, so just to make sure that they win the speed race, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's less likely to have they have polymorph. Like once my shoes are in six star, I'm gonna have I'm not gonna have polymorph. I have to switch to him uh uh, intimidated presence because I want to make sure that I get the first turn. Okay, glad you also hate Gizmag. By the way, I'm curious. So you said that you're not like you spend was it like fifty to hundred fifty or something like that. So yeah. the the only thing that you're buying right now is the mythic shards or what you do. I don't buy shards. I buy the. I, I, like, I used to buy shots back in the days. Now there is this pack, like, gems, basically. Like, because if you saw, my, my new cards aren't good enough, but my gear is kind of good. Let's just say that. What's the, 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 do you know the gem pack? Like, the 4,800 gems? 
No, <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> monthly game pack, but you're talking about something else. Yeah, I. I yeah, there is a gem one. pack, sixty dollars. You buy around five thousand gems, so I can make sure that like I farm during Savage. I know people say like Savage is not meta because of Merciless and Lethal, but the the problem is you don't get enough of those two pieces, so you have to farm Savage. And Merciless is is better on attack champions. Lethal is just a straight better, but you don't get enough. Like last time I forged lethal, I only got one piece. Yeah, like I have kind of enough, but I have been farming it from the start and it's super RNG. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the difference. So for me to keep up, I need to farm Fire Knight. So I farm Fire Knight a lot and Sand Devil. The Dragon, I don't dot touch it. Ice Golem is just a bad dungeon overall. Like once you have, let's say, eight pieces of Cursed set, I don't think this dungeon is even good for anything i know some people say provoke curse well, sorry provoke and retaliation but i think they are just bad gears uh yeah I, I mean i don't see anybody using retaliation to be honest even though it kind of sounds good being a two piece it could change if there was like some champion that is super op with that but yeah i mean curse is for like <laughs> hydra I don't think most PvP players care about that too much. And you don't need insane curse set for high Exactly, anyway. you just need 8 pieces, that's it. They are good or bad, 8 pieces is enough. You can just try to upgrade those pieces, have better in the future, but 8 pieces is literally enough. Like, like you just have one for Nightmare, one for Brutal, and on the normal or hard, whatever you do, you can just run a Hex champion. Yeah, and it's not like, I mean, there is Hex champions also, so it's not like you completely need it, but in Chandra teams, they definitely do use it. Yeah, so sp spending wise, I don't buy souls. I did once, bought like uh, $200 back. I got nothing. So I think souls is the biggest scam in the game. Because, like, let's say you spend 200 on Ancient Shard, you get a Legendary, right? If you spend 200 on this, you're not getting anything unless you're insanely lucky. By insanely lucky, it's going to be like one every 1,000. So I don't think spending here is actually worth it. And the only thing that's now good in the game is Primal Shard. I don't value Sacred anymore or Void. Because, like, we have so many Void champions that the good ones are just very few. I didn't have enough Voids for the Nazis, so I don't have him. So I think the only good stuff, like, gym packs, but I still don't get it, like, uh... Like a Plarium last year, I don't... I, I think they made a... Like, the, their greatest decision was giving us, uh... Uh, this mythical charm, I never expect. I would never expect them to give this us for free. I was expecting them to just make a hard, uh, sorry, nightmare doom tower, and to, to get those you need to farm nightmare the doom tower. But they just gave it to us for free. Yeah, I didn't exactly expect that one either. But if you look at like all of the old uh, like uh, items and mechanics and updates, basically Plarium just keeps like slowly ramping everything to, ma to the maximum. That, you know, originally we had 5-star items, then we got 6-star items, and we're, we're getting, you know, like, legendary uh, items, then we get the mythic items. With, uh, with the champions, we get the mythics eventually. So I'm sure they're gonna do everything to the max ra rarity at some point. I mean, that's basically what they do. They release something at its lowest form, and then in a couple of years they do the better version yeah, of it. Yeah, so like Mythical Charm was actually the best the best thing they've added to the game. And uh, Forge Pass, the Righteous Gear, I know like people don't like it as much, but without Righteous Gear, I wouldn't be able to compete in speed. Because like those, like, uh, like okay, let me, let me show you, like my speed gear. And I'm not free to play, like keep this in mind. Okay, so this is my fastest piece, 22. My second fastest is 18. <laughs> yeah. If we go to the Righteous, which I bought it twice. 28. 27. 22. Well, it, to be fair, it kind of sounds like you just got the better RNG with Righteous than Speed. Yeah. It's not like it's guaranteed, but yeah. Righteous well, it's, is, it's... is pretty good set, to be fair. It's a very good set, yeah. Like, uh, if, if resistance was more relevant, you could even say that it's the best 2P set in the game because it does give you the most stats. But maybe uh, maybe the new Feral set is kind of comparable, but it does give you most stats out of the 2P sets. It's just that the resistance is super, is not super meta. 
That's why I always say that I hope they should they never made six star awakening. It doesn't require accuracy. It should if it should require accuracy, then righteous would be the best gear. But now because six star doesn't require accuracy, which is dumb. I don't think this is good for the game. Like uh like six star doesn't require accuracy, it's just going to remove to like ramp up your stats. Because let's say you have five star, you still have to build for accuracy to land cheap, right? Cheap. But once you're six star on something like let's say Sifi. Sifi doesn't need accuracy. But on five star you can't run polymorph because you need the accuracy and you're not gonna build your Sifi for accuracy. You go to six star, it doesn't need accuracy, and you can just sheep everyone, which means you don't have to build for accuracy and you can just go for more speed. So I think this is just a mistake they made and I don't know. I hope they one day make it required accuracy. Yeah, I mean, considering that they did the update, I'm not expecting them to ever change it, but yeah. Like, like Primstone, it's a PvE. Usually, they do not care about PvE because it's not that big of a problem. Because they would rather everyone beat every content so they can make a new content and make more money. I feel like they do make the content kind of hard. I mean, considering like Phantom Shokur, maybe it's their tactic that they make things too hard and then they nerf them later. But they made, I think, all of the new dungeons, like Iron Twins, Phantom Shokun, Phantom Shokun and Sand Devil, all of them are a bit too hard. In my, not anymore, but they used to be. Well, yeah, but there was a way to do it. Like, I was hoping that they nerf Fire Knight a bit, like just make it 18 hits instead of 21. Yeah, Fire Knight 2 is, is too hard, yeah. Like, they, they never nerfed it, so I'm like, I'm like, I am sure I could do uh, 25 without any problem, especially if you did the Emic Fusion. And here, you all you need is uh, Gutseeker and Eerie, and we had like two guaranteed events for Gutseeker and Eerie, so it was doable. But Fire Knight is just like, like my team is literally just overkill for the, for the Fire Knight, what's my team. Yeah. I don't have a second node, so I'm like 350 accuracy on your Carl, 325, uh, sorry, 300, it, so this, my slowest hit champion is 300 at least, just so I can have enough turns to keep landing freeze, because none of the freeze here is guaranteed on your Carl or uh, Blizzard. Yeah, I think they should derf it, but to be fair, I mean, you can just like, you know, farm like uh, Fire Knight 8 or something like that, yeah, and it's six, a lot... Six. It's a lot easier, but uh, I think it's kind of weird that they, like, fair enough if they want it to be super hard, but the other, like, um, hard dungeons are way easier than Fire Knight. I think that's, like, that's what's weird about this. <laughs> like, a Dragon Heart isn't even hard. Like, Mithralic can, can literally just solo it, Staltus can solo the boss. Lots of champions, even Dark Kale, like an Epic, can solo yeah. the, the boss. Yeah, I can tell you that for instance on the Dragon Heart, I don't, I mean, I have a team for it, but it's not, uh, I didn't build anything for for the dragon. It's just what I already had geared. And it's like, uh, <laughs> what is it like? Seer, Staldos, Skymar, and something like that. Yeah. And it, it can easily auto it. And I didn't gear anybody. Like my Staldos is not even in Regen set or anything like that. It's just in the normal arena build. And that, that yeah, works just, just, just fine. Reflect. Yeah. Like, uh, like what's my... Okay, let me, let me, this is my, my dragon team. It's literally just seat, seat setup without anything. And then like I have Ninja and Mithrala to solo the boss. And it's so easy. I didn't even build anything with gear or something like, like, like this. Yeah, I mean, if you ask me, I care about PvP. So I'm happy if I can easily auto all of the dungeons. And if they are not relevant on PvP, then I don't care in the first place, but if it's something like Hydra that you must do, then I do want it to be easy enough that I can actually do it. What I don't get about it, like, like they know that people don't like Ice Golem and they kept Ice, they made Ice Golem even worse. It's like, you know, people just don't play this dungeon, right? So why would you make it even harder? Yeah, I mean, again, it's not really, it's not really so, my, my stuff. I don't really pay, pay attention to it, to be honest. I can do Ice yeah. Golem, but I don't farm it outside of Fusion, yeah, so I, only for the events. Believe it or not, I still farm only stage 20. It's not worth it. The dungeon is 
Like what what I hate is that sometimes I I have an art attack that can solo it, but sometimes for some reason like my attack is like built well. Like he still died to the boss even though we're talking about his eyes golem. Like almost 300 speed with enough resistance and accuracy and HP and defense. But yeah, this this dungeon is just dumb. <laughs> I don't like it. I like Centranus a lot because it gave me like kind of a challenge. Like Cursed City. Like I was able to beat the last two rotations. Uh, and I think the biggest mistake people make here is like they just bring five stun set when in fact you just need two CC and three nukes. That's like the best way to do Centranus instead of just instead of just like five CC because five CC do not do enough damage because in Centranus waves are booked, which means they get to their abilities pretty fast. Yeah, I, I'm not that big fan of Centranus. I hate it. I wish I could just auto all of the floors and not pay any attention to it, but it's not quite easy enough that you can actually do that. Yeah. I mean, I can but, auto, you know, let's say like 70% of the floors on the hard, but there's quite big amount of the floors that I need to manual and change well, items. And it's so always, it's 19, it's 18, it's 20, it's 14. Those stages can't be autoed. Like no matter how late game or end game your account is, you, you know, maybe you could do fourteen. Yeah, but the problem is they made it so easy for mythicals. Like, look at this stage. This is one of the most annoying ones. But, but, but if you have <laughs> this yeah. champion, he can just solo it. Yeah, yeah. We we have talked about this before because you know, all of the mythicals are two roles, and you can use them in like many many more floors than you can other champions it's clearly intended by Plarium to make them more relevant i mean it is what it it's is it's like extremely hard unless you have a mythical which is which makes it extremely easy uh there was another stage so yeah s8 stage, yeah i was just gonna say stage eight is like a pain like i literally when we got this the first time i literally didn't have a single champion level 60 on, the, on this room not not yeah, any like champion yeah, like, look at my team. This is my nuker, by the way. Sentinel, a rare champion. Yeah, yeah, but it's... That's the only nuker I have here. Everything else is just CC and, like, support. And without Spider, you can't do it. And this champion is just so bad that you always feed him. And he's a must in this stage, if you don't have... Alas. Uh, okay. the... What's his name? The... Alsgore Grim, Grimson Horn is good on that though. Yeah, Alsgore. But Alsgore, you can't pull him from a shard unless it's a 10x. Right? Uh, I wouldn't know. I'm... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Alsgore is the, the block champion. The yeah, block it's, it's, I thought it's, Alsgore is the. Is it's the champion team. that bears with the fusion. Yeah. I yeah, you can use this champion as well in that one, but you can't pull him. <laughs> Aislin. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, what do you think about Siege, though? Uh, like, more specifically? What, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I think we'll see how it develops when people actually get to do battles. So far, we only had one battle, and most of the top clans had some really easy battle, and it wasn't super interesting, so... We'll see about it. I felt like they made a huge content for the game mode to be like 3v3 you do with your clan. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think the thing about that content is that uh, if you don't really put a lot of effort into it, you can get some rewards and it doesn't take a lot of time. But if you try to like compete in it, you, you do have to think about it a lot. So it's kind of yeah. people people can waste as much time as they want on it. So maybe it's good. And it, you know, I build, uh, uh, what? I built this champion because you said so, by the way. Ah, oh, okay. W was it any useful or you haven't gotten to use it? I haven't used her. Like I built it like literally, I think five days ago. So she's ready to go now because she's my only lockout champion. As yeah. you say, like I, so I don't have any lockout champion. I, I have even lost to Alika in live arena before. So it, it is oh. what it is. <laughs> But yeah, I, I think uh, it's kind of still a re remains to be seen how 
how good Siege is. I think my clan will probably have fun with it, but I'm not sure if most people are going to care about it that much. But if you only have to do like three battles every two weeks, it also is not out of effort for most people. Yeah, that's like that's like what I was thinking about is like it's it's it looks like a very big content and then you could literally just finish the battles in like uh, uh like how how long like uh, you can finish the battles in in like 20 minutes li even less than 20 minutes yeah but if you like look at everybody's uh champions and build their teams and assign everybody to every floor and look at the different okay. rules that you can do on those floors and try to make the best teams then it does take a lot of time so i see yeah like if you have to assign people based on the uh, champion because believe it or not I am the only one in the entire clan without a Harima, and I am technically the biggest spender in the clan. Like, my clan is full of free-to-play players, and every one of them has a Harima. Some of them actually have six-star Harima as well. <laughs> yeah, probably... Well, I'm sure not everybody, but yeah, pretty much everybody in my clan has it too. Like, not having Lockout and Harima, I guess we can both relate with that, because it sucks. Yeah, and... like, I don't have a Lockout or a Harima. It's kind of basic thing that almost everybody has seen it like God yeah, you know, like, like i feel like you should do add that meme every time opponent picks a harima or a lockout against you as a last pick because they know you don't have it you know like oh shit here we go again like the gta meme oh i actually do have that on my soundboard <laughs> but i haven't used it good good uh good point i'll, I'll make sure to yeah use it's it. like it's like you know that <laughs> your opponent no you don't have a harima you don't have a lockout so they will use them as their last pick <laughs> You don't have them. <laughs> I, I wonder if I if I put that every time I do Harima, what are people gonna say about that on next video? Yeah. It's like, oh shit, here we go again. Yeah, he knows we don't have a Harima. First pick, they will pick UDK Rotos, then you're left without champions. <laughs> yeah, I kind of say that verbally, but but not with the soundboard. I I should use yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's everything about raid. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, okay. I think I think we're good. It's pretty long video. Uh, do you want to say anything about your channel at the end of the video? Oh, uh, so uh, I do lots of Centranos content. In fact, I started making content because my clan needed help in Centranos. So I'm like, okay, I can just record how to do it and upload it to you upload it to YouTube. And now I just started making it because I get lots of requests on how to beat specific stages. As an example, currently. This was pain in pain in the butt. Same, same goes for those three. So I started making content more like recently because I actually like that gave me another reason to play the game, which is like helping people out. Uh, it's not the most hyped content. Like I don't jump out of my chair when I pull a legendary. So don't expect that, please. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, to, to be fair, I think there's not like too many people like doing out of. I mean, people are doing city content, but. It's like when Doom Tower became, uh, was released or when Hydra was released, there was like some new content creators that only did content for those. I don't think if there's anybody doing that for uh, Sintranos. Yeah. It's in the meantime, I, I like to do it. If something I pull sometimes, I test out. As an example, I recently did a video about Carnage. I did a couple about Tashiro. I think I did about Xena as well. Because I feel like if you have a Xena and you don't use her, there is a problem we need to talk about because I'm sure you play enough against Sifi to just justify building Xena. And she yeah. doesn't need that great of a gear because she has built in increased attack. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm still kind of having a hard time using her nowadays because usually they have stone skin and they probably have multiple lockouts and so on and it's kind of hard to actually get to do much with her since she isn't tanky or anything like that. But sometimes she can be super good. I feel like she was actually better when she was new, and now when there's a lot of mutikas, she's Stone not... skin accessories. Yeah, she's <laughs> not as skin good as. Yeah, it's yeah. Just a different meta. Yeah, so that's like all I do. Like sometimes I make videos about shard pulling, but I don't make videos all the time about pulling shards because sometimes when I make a video about pulling shard and like you don't pull a legendary, then I I'm like I feel like I should buy more to pull one just for the video. Which I felt like it's a bad habit to do, so I'd rather just pull, pull off stream. <laughs> so I don't have to buy more. Yeah. But yeah, basically right now, 
Crit City, some Hydra content, and whatever new champion I built. And whenever there is 3D gearing, I sometimes do some guides about epics. Like now I have a plus four Venom Age, Vector, Cathex, yeah. almost Deacon. Honestly, I don't think I have any epic at plus four yet, just because, you know, there's no room in the world that I didn't keep mass amounts of oh. them. It's going to take years to actually get all of the epics plus four, but I guess everybody will get them eventually if you play long enough. Just get the good ones. Just get the Gala. Uh, you, Husk roll is kind of like insane in Centranos. Uh, Husk, but the problem with Husk, what's Centranos, you actually need three to build. You need to build three. Two is not enough. Samir goes for Zargala and Mistrider Mist Mist Dahi. Those, those you can't empower because you need much more copies. Alika is a good one. So yeah, thank you so much for having me on the channel, and thank you, thank you so much for the coaching. Yeah, no, no problem. I've been uh, meaning to do this, and actually, I did one of these videos like uh, a few months ago. <laughs> and what happened with that video was that the audio was uh, like oh. scuffed, and I couldn't even release that video. <laughs> so. Oh, I see. <laughs> and it, oh, it, I, I think it was even longer than this. I think we did like three or four hour video. It was super long, and we talked forever and. I couldn't even use that video, so I'll probably do this more often because actually quite often people ask ask me to do these kind of videos, so I should yeah, do them. Yeah, outside arena. Well, to be fair, I, I get it. Like, like not everyone enjoys PvP. We have the same problem in Pokemon Go. Like, people just don't enjoy PvP because it's very competitive in a game that's literally about collecting stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And, so, okay, like, you, so okay, this is a funny subject. You you tell me if I'm wrong. Again, I told you before this video that my mom plays Pokemon Go very actively, uh, yes. like super super actively. And from what I've seen, like basically whenever, like I don't live close to her, but whenever we meet, it doesn't matter if it's in my city or her city or wherever. We will always go to the local Pokemon Go meetup and so on. So <laughs> I I have seen the Pokemon Go players, and from what I've seen. It's like, uh, I don't know, like 12 year old children and 50 year old <laughs> soccer moms. That, that's basically what I see. Tell, yes. tell, tell so, me if I'm wrong about it. So like a good part about the game is like, like I started playing Pokemon Go because I wanted to walk, out, walk, start walking, like go outside and walk and like just not stick, like stay at home for like all day. Because I used to play Dota 2 and I used to play for like, like I work get back from work, I play Dota 2 until I go sleep during the weekend, it's all Dota 2. And then I needed to quit that bad habit, so I was looking for the game that helps me out, and then that's why I started doing Pokemon Go, because I have to go outside. And usually when you play the game, most of the people who play it is like, you will see a husband and wife and their kids. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, kind of like a that's family what I'm thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does happen. I, I, I can tell you that, like I said, my mom is super, you know, <laughs> hardcore <laughs> and she, she has been you know in other countries and she has gotten pokemons that are not supposed to be like like from like from other places i can't tell specific pokemons but you know that some pokemons are like you know region specific and you can get them from specific countries and you know all of the all of the small children in like her local yeah. city they're always asking her for favors that can you give me this pokemon <laughs> and, and that pokemon and so exactly because some pokemons spawn in like small regions and they there is also some pokemons that spawn in very specific areas like as an example there is a pokemon spawn in europe but it doesn't spawn elsewhere so when you travel you have to catch those so you can trade them to your locals like you give them something they give you something you want stuff like that it's it's like trade i wish they added trade but the problem with raid okay I don't want to make it sound like people who spend are the problem. The problem with it is that there is lots of people who spend lots of money that they can't make a trade a good thing in the game. Because you're just going to become a friend with one of the whales and they can just pass all the champions that they don't want, right? But in Pokemon Go, there isn't that much level of spending that the trading is actually one of the best things they added to the game. Because, like, what else, like, uh, how else people will, will get those Pokemons, right? They just know someone that they have them, and then you trade them for, like, a, a very expensive resource you have to spend. But it's, most of the time, it's worth it. Because you're getting something you don't have. But, like, something in, uh, in Pokemon Go called the IV, which is basically every Pokemon has a different IV, which means it's, it's not 
perfect stats. Like stats is variable for the same, the same Pokemon. So imagine you have to catch the 300 Pokemons of that just to get one with perfect stats. Yeah. So it's like some, something dumb they added. Maybe if you ask her about the IV, she, she will show you like basically they no, have no. the basic stats. There, okay, let me correct you that one. So like I told you before, I haven't played Pokemon Go, but I have played Pokemon super competitively since I was a little kid. I, I explained all of that stuff to her when she was playing. Ob obviously, yeah, so, oh, obviously, I, obviously, I know <laughs> like in, in the normal Pokemon or in the VGC, there's of course uh, like individual values and effort values. We, we have this mechanic in the normal Pokemon. Yeah. So I'm very, very familiar with that. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure most people in the audience are not not familiar with, but like basically the the uh, IVs are just like random stats and that some Pokemon are born better than others. And they might have like one specific stat that let's say that their attack might have like a high roll or it might have a low roll. Just like in Raid, you can have item with 8% attack or 6% uh, exactly. attack. You can have like that in Pokemon, but it can be a little bit uh, bigger deal than that. And also, in, I don't think that's in Pokemon Go, but in the normal Pokemon, but, there's also yeah. a thing called effort value. And you can basically distribute certain amount of stats to the specific... We, we still don't have these items in the game because I don't think they will ever add them to the game because they can just increase the value of the Pokemons you have, which means you don't have to spend to get the stuff you want. So mm. think of it this way, like in Raid, let's say you have to open 225 shards to get one champion you want. In Pokemon Go, you can literally spend as little as $1 and get the, the, the Pokemon you want. But you have to do 225 to get one with perfect IV. That is actually worth the investment. Yeah, so you can yeah. get a legendary and it will be totally worthless. Most of the time, 99.9596, it will be useless. And correct me if I'm wrong, because again, I don't play Pokemon Go, but I think there's some mechanics that if you trade Pokemons with other players, they, I don't, I don't know if it's for the shiny or it's the IVs, but I feel like you can reroll the stats if you trade them. Yes, you could uh, reroll the stats based off the friendship. It can go like there is 15 base from one to 15 for attack, one to 15 for defense, one to 15 for HP. So depending on the friendship, those base goes from one or two or three or four, and there is something called lucky friend, which in average you get lucky with every friend once a year or twice a year, on average. And the base for it lucky is 12, 12, 12. So have you, ha you have a much higher chance into getting like a much better stats from lucky friendship. So again, trade is, is, is a huge part of the Pokemon Go that we don't have in raid. So I don't think if they should ever do it because both games are like game, uh, like champion character collecting, right? You, you just collect the stuff. So you should be able to do trade at one point. Uh, in, in raid? Yeah. Okay, I know that's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Maybe someone will trade us a Harima. <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> would not... I, I would like it, but that's definitely not gonna happen because, you know, yeah. obviously they would not make money if that was the thing, so... By the way, okay. Well, uh, yeah, what were you gonna say? Well, it's like it's like in Pokemon Go, when they made it, they lost some money, but it, it was like... They the trade helped people who already don't spend regardless. So, you know, like there are people, lots of people who don't spend. So it's like kind of a favor to them. It's similar to like mythical rarity charm, right? Like those help people who don't spend. Generally help everyone, but in, in, to be more specific, help people who don't spend, right? So you can like, uh, you get like mythical lethal. Sure. So I thought this one thing will never come out as a free resource, but it did because they they gave us lots of bullshit champions <laughs> that they had they, they 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 needed to make something doable for like people who actually don't spend like they need to give something in return like you can't just keep making these champions and not think about the people the casual people who play the game casually yeah I, honestly i'm like no offense i'm kind of surprised that pokemon go is that popular but i'm sure a lot of people are surprised the trade is so popular so it's like Different yeah. games for different it's people. It's still the number one mobile game, by the way. Pokemon Go. Yeah, it's yeah. just like you don't know the people who play the play the game anymore. As and when it first, well, and when it first released, similar. Think of it to Pal Ward. You know, like when Pal Ward was released, it was crazy how everyone was playing it. Now you don't hear about anyone play Pal Ward, right? Yeah, I guess to, to be fair, I didn't even play Pal Ward on release. And I have played every single Pokemon 
a game ever and many fan games like let's say more than 10 different fan-made pokemon games i have played yeah. a lot i didn't even try palward <laughs> but yeah i felt like palward was like the best of what the fans would ever expect from a Pokemon game or like a Pokemons with guns and you could use the, those Pokemons to work for you instead of just having Are, them with new storage without it, using. It, it depends what you're into, but I will definitely say that for me, the best Pokemon game, and this is not an official one, is Pokemon Reborn. It's kind of a Pokemon game that is meant for people that played Pokemon as a kid and now are much older. Oh. It's super hard. It's insanely hard. It's meant to be insanely hard. And you need to actually like, you need to use like super competitive uh, builds <laughs> to make that game. And that's not enough. It's meant to be super hard and challenging. You actually need to theory craft a lot and see what Pokemon, like basically it's the, the, com the level is super hard. You can't get good Pokemon. They are super rare to get like actually good Pokemon. And only like very late into the game, you can actually start getting some half decent Pokemon. And all of the enemies that you meet are like completely min maxed competitive builds, and you can't get yeah. access to all of the stuff. And that's a super good game. I but recommend when say, it. When you say builds and Pokemon, what is builds? Because in Pokemon, we don't have builds. We just have a Pokemon, you just max it out to level 50 or whatever level you it, want them so, to be. That's yeah, it. So, so it, you know, it's kind of very comparable to Raid. It's like in the normal Pokemon games, like I said, so you, you have like the. IV in Pokemon Go. Yes. In normal Pokemon, you can have IV from 0 to 31 on every single stat. That's one thing that you want to get IVs, at least on the really important stats like, let's say, speed and your main attack. But if you really want to make good builds, you need to have perfect IVs on everything. And you might even want to have 0 IVs in some situations, like on speed, for instance. Yeah. And But then there's another thing. There's uh, EVs, and those are called effort values, and you get those from battles. So you, oh, okay. It's kind of like this, the same system, but in different way that you battle a specific types of Pokemon and you get specific, uh, like you can get attack values. And then you need to fight the right ones to max the right stats. If you don't, you need to oh, okay. reduce the stats in the other abilities. And also in Pokemon, it's super complicated if you like, especially in Reborn and if you play normal games without trading. But there's many moves that the Pokemon can learn, but they don't learn it by themselves. And only way to learn those moves is that you have, you breed that Battle. Pokemon. No, you breed that Pokemon with another Pokemon that can learn that move. And often you can't get those Pokemons like without trading, or you can get them much later in the game. So you can't actually use the best abilities, uh, the best uh, skills and builds on those Pokemon. And you have to use you know unoptimized builds and so on. So it's very similar to raid. It's actually kind of complex if you haven't played Pokemon. If you get into it, you yeah, also. Like you also have items in Pokemon and passive abilities, just like in Raid. Like in Pokemon Go, they always, we say it, implement the new stuff with the laziest possible way. As an example, when they implemented the stuff to teach your Pokemon a legacy move, they just added an item, you you buy it for like $8. <laughs> so that's, that's all you need to do. I wish they did like the game, because PvP and Pokemon Go is, is not about just, like Raid is about strategy. Pokemon strategy plus wallet you could say that pokemon go it's not about strategy all the time yes you need a couple strategies but once you master them it's all about ha having like fast responses like like let's say uh, the, the 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 t the opposing team swapped you need to swap within like less than half a second so if you have like slow reactions you you you're just not gonna have good time in in, in pvp yeah, uh, but Pokemon VGC combat is pretty much exactly like Raid. It's it's the same thing, and the whaling is not even a thing there because it's more about the effort into making the best possible Pokemon. Oh, and, is and it while, VGC like based off turns? Like everyone will take a turn at once. Yeah, it, it works exactly like Raid. You take turns, and um, you know you kind of like you know in Raid you can build a Nuker very fast, or you can build it slow, or you can have high attack, you can have Stone hmm. skin set. You have the exact same mechanics in Pokemon. That's how, that's the way it works too. Like no, in, in Pokemon you, Go both attack at the same time. No, no, no. no I mean, I mean, in the normal Pokemon, in the VGC, yeah. like you can both have the same Pokemon, and they they can have totally different stats and builds, and it, it, you can make different strategies. Like I would yeah. say that po Pokemon is like Raid, maybe a little bit more complicated, but it, it works the exact same way actually. Most of the gacha, gacha collecting stuff or like have the same concept. I mean, I would say that most of the games started copying Pokemon games, but Pokemon Go games are still lacking like the good graphics. 
And yeah. the the good interactable way with like you know like in raid like you saw how like when you pull a legendary or a mythical like the entire screen start flashing. Dude, yeah, I have been speaking about that for years. That like they don't want to do it. We we know how like yes. Nintendo yes. works, but Pokemon should make an MMO. There's actually a couple fan made MMOs of Pokemon, but Pokemon could be like really good MMO game if they decided to do it. But they're not gonna do it. They they want the game to be like. Uh, cater towards children but the way it yeah. actually has worked with Pokemon is that of course there That's is chi why. children playing but m most of the players that actually play Pokemon or like all of the pl players let's <laughs> say that are like competitive they are like old people that played the Pokemon as a kid so there's a lot of old people playing Pokemon let's put it that That's way. That's why people liked Palward when it was first released because it looked like Pokemon but there was lots of combat right? Yeah yeah. And it wasn't like just like games that looked literally for like looks like a game for the kids right yeah yeah like i could tell you 99.999 percent of pokemon go players are like families play the game together and they literally would maybe never use their pokemons to fight so just collect and go outside together yeah. like okay, on okay. The weekend. now now we're getting super into pokemon i, I need to kind of rush into <laughs> into store that it's about to close soon but uh okay. like uh if you actually look at the older pokemon games the story was actually kind of, you know, uh, not super child friendly. I mean, there's people dying and there's, you know, terrorist organizations and that kind of stuff. People trying to take over the world. They made every game more like family friendly after that. The first game, if you like actually look into the story, it's not like there's actually kind of some like, you know, bad stuff and people are dying at the suicides and this kind of stuff that will never be in Pokemon games again. If you're into that stuff and you want to try more adult oriented game, I recommend you to try Pokemon Reborn. It's okay. It's like a Pokemon game made by fans and it's made for adults. So the story is kind of very similar to normal Pokemon games, but it's it's made for adults. So there's you know the terrorist organization yeah. are actually like super evil and they are murdering people and there's you know <laughs> mysteries going on and this kind of stuff. Like and the game is super hard. Okay, funny enough, you know, in Pokemon, like, casters do not say, like, let's say in, in the battle, when you kill the opposing Pokemon, they don't say kill, you have to say faint. Yeah, faint, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is stupid, it's like, dude, the, like, the game is made for kids, like, they don't use kill, it's always faint, and it's, they, even though they have an item called revive, it's like, you revive someone dead, you don't revive someone fainted, right? Yeah, yeah, and, you know, we're getting super in, in the details here, but even if you, like, follow the original uh, Pokemon show and the game. Uh, there's like, you know, so Pokemon, like one of the main characters, Pokemon's, uh, Pokemon died in the story and becomes like a ghost, but they don't yeah. explicitly, you Metal know. Walk. Yeah, yeah, they don't, exp that's, what, I think there was like the, I forget the names, the Gary's Ratata also died and becomes a ghost yes. or something like that. <laughs> there's actually stuff like that, but they don't make a super big deal about it. And they, exactly. they don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Yeah, the Pokemon you would like to say is a, a Meadowak, and the, yeah. they have another form called Alolan Meadowak, which is like a ghost. And basically, ghosts are Pokemon who actually died. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Gengar. Yeah, yeah, and like the the like I know what you're talking about, but there's two different things. Like the there, there's the Pokemon that you meet in the first game in the whatever tower it's called. That is the dead Marowak of some character, but also one of the main characters in the story like the Gary, which is your main rival in the oh, in the yeah. series. One of his Pokemons also dies and becomes a ghost, but it's not really super like uh, talked about a lot, but there's a lot of, you know, weird things. <laughs> you know, Japanese, you know, the culture is a little bit different in Europe. So yeah. often their, their games have things that are not like normal to us, but Pokemon specifically, they really wanted to have it, and I guess Nintendo in general, but Pokemon specifically, they wanted to make it super child friendly, so they yeah. cut all of that stuff out eventually. Yeah, it's it's, it's a very family friendly game. Like like they don't even negotiate that. So it's not even debatable. Like you can't even ask. Like okay, can we have like more like of like more of combat? Like have like better uh, animation? It's like no, it's going to be fainted. And if you are a Pokemon, like. Who, like let's say a Pokemon streamer, you say like, oh, their Pokemon is dead. You're not gonna make it as a caster. Like you're not, you're not gonna work with them because, because there is no way to contact them. But they contact you if they need you to work with them. And you have to be a very family friendly. You can't even swear on Twitter or stuff like that to work with them. So it's it's not just even the game. It's like working with them requires similar level of 
RPG language. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I don't follow Pokemon Go, but I do follow Pokemon. I'm pretty f well familiar. Like, uh, there's all kind of scandals. Like, I don't know if you know about this, but there's a lot of cheating in Pokemon VGC, and they kind of try yeah. to uh, put it under the rug, even though basically, like, practically everybody is cheating in the game and so on. It's, they, it's, they, they actually banned someone last year in the yeah. international tournament. They, they, like, they, they do ban people regularly from it, but yeah. if you're just like. If you look at the teams from like the like let's say the, the world championships, practically usually every single team is cheated. Just to be honest, like yeah. all of the te teams are hacked. Like there is very rarely anybody that doesn't have a hacked team. But you know, it's kind of like in raid that they allow account trading and they don't really like make a big deal about it, even though it's technically yeah. against the rules. And sometimes people get banned for it. That's the same thing that happens with Pokemon, except that they hack their Pokemon's and because. Like I mentioned before, with the EVs and uh, IVs, it can take you like hundreds of hours to make a perfect Pokemon. And if we talk about legendary Pokemon, you, you can't get them. You can't get them in practice. The only way that you can get the perfect legendary Pokemon is by cheating. That, that's just how it works. I think I just stole your luck, Shini. This is my oh best nice love on my entire account. I just congrats. <laughs> Quad <laughs> almost. Ah uh, okay. <laughs> okay anyway anyway we need to end this here because i need to yeah. run, run to the shop so i yeah. I, I link you the uh pokemon ga game and a funny video about like a pokemon movie trailer that is made for adults later yeah thank but you so much for having me on your channel i appreciate the chance and hopefully like uh, we work more together in the future as yeah well. yeah thanks for joining the video and have a nice day and see you